CIA of any failures in the 2012 attack on the American embassy in Benghazi that killed U.S. Ambassador Christopher Stevens and three other Americans. The report concluded the CIA ensured sufficient security for CIA facilities in Benghazi and bravely assisted the State Department. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A report finds it's not okay to just start talking to people you don't know, and a monstrosity is created in the Frito-Lay Laboratory. This is the Onion Week in Review. Local newborn Nathan Jameson surprised the world earlier this morning by irrevocably losing all faith in humanity after just six days. Though he's not yet developed the capacity for speech, spokespeople for the six-day-old baby have confirmed he already knows that humans cannot be trusted and that most people lack self-awareness about their own destructive tendencies. While most people need around 30 or 40 years to truly understand that the vast majority of humanity is shallow and irredeemable, maybe Nathan's convinced that he has seen all that he needs to see. People have been nice and even brought him toys and presents, but the fact is, Nathan knows they're all full of shit. And in this week's science report, botanists discover trees are all slowly trying to strangle each other. In other news, a fun-loving turtle is all business when it comes to feeding time, and a party-goer rolls a couple of fat burritos to pass around. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You are invited here to take control of the airwaves. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number, and that number brought to you by Pro XPN. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in the studio tonight, you've got Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. And we will, of course, take your calls about anything. We've got Skype. Skype username is lrn.fm. We open with a piece from theonion.com. We're out of Ferguson, Missouri. Ahead of a grand jury's decision over whether to indict Officer Darren Wilson in the shooting death of unarmed black teenager Michael Brown, police in the city of Ferguson have reportedly heavily increased their presence this week to ensure residents are adequately provoked. Quote, we've deployed additional officers throughout Ferguson in order to make absolutely certain that residents feel sufficiently harassed and intimidated, unquote, said St. Louis County Police Chief John (laughs) Belmar, assuring locals that officers in full riot gear will be on hand to inflame members of the community for as long as is necessary. Quote, just to let people know, the onion is fake news. This sounds believable to me. It certainly does. (laughs) It's absolutely essential that the people of Ferguson have full confidence that law enforcement is committed to antagonizing them every step of the way, unquote. At press time, the Missouri National Guard was on standby with tanks and urban assault vehicles in case Ferguson residents required additional incitement. So, (laughs) wow. It's uh, yes, the Onion is a satire website. However, sometimes the satire can strike more accurately, I think, than uh, the mainstream media can. I do have a mainstream media uh, version of a Ferguson story. Apparently, the verdict, at least from the grand jury, has been reached. You know, I guess they returned. But they true don't know bill. what it is. True bill, no bill. I think is is that what right. comes back from? It's a not grand guilty jury? or not guilty. Right. So they'll come back with their decision. Apparently, it's going to be announced at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Tonight, so we can talk more about you know what's going on on the ground in Ferguson, Missouri. But the, there's bit. claims that it's been leaked, right? Yeah, I thought it's oh, already really? been announced. It's okay. been leaked. Uh, I okay. have not I seen. That, all right, I've not seen the leak. Um, I don't know what the, the source claim is. is that it's already. Um, you know, I, I I have to look. But it's not hard to predict what's going to no be. No bill. Um, yeah, I, I don't expect they are going to bring him up on charges. But I just think it's interesting this onion piece because it really captures. I think what the police, the effect that they have on people or the, the, that they can have on people, especially people who are angry about something. Uh, for instance, we went through the riots here in Keene, New Hampshire, a few a few weeks ago during October, during Pumpkin Fest. It made international headlines. You may have seen the stories. And if you certainly if you were listening to Free Talk Live, you heard quite a bit of coverage about this. But when you talk to the college students When you talk to the people who were on the ground during these riots and you ask them about how the police handled things and did the police's presence calm things down or did it make things worse, uh, from what I saw, the interviews that I I saw, and I looked at all the video I could from the, the Pumpkin Fest riots, it seemed to me like the common refrain from the people who were down there was that the police 
escalated those conflicts, and they escalated them unnecessarily. There were obviously some troubled young people who were doing damage, but the argument was that had the police not been going around kicking people out of their homes, they were having parties. Pumpkin Fest is this big gathering. There's thousands of people that come to Keene, and hundreds, if not thousands of those thousands, come to the college neighborhoods, and they have parties, big parties, you know, parties with people likely spilling out of the front door of the house. I mean, that kind of size of a party. But uh, apparently what had happened was the police had come by with riot gear, and with paintball guns that have uh, these, not paintballs in them, but pepper balls. So when they, uh, when they explode on impact, it sends you know, some sort of amount of pepper out into the air, some sort of gas-style pepper. I'm not sure exactly what's in the pepper ball, but you know, it will affect an area, that it, uh, area upon its impact. And it makes things very uncomfortable. I, I saw video footage of the young people having the fronts of their houses shot up by the police. And them choking. The pepper balls, you mean? Uh, yes, shot up with pepper balls. Uh, and the young people choking and very, you know, obviously a very uncomfortable thing that you don't want to be around after a pepper ball uh, explodes. So the police are coming you by. You also feel really disempowered in that circumstance. You're like, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Because consider that a party may be going on, and many of these units are duplexes or something like that. The police pepper ball your uh, neighbor's unit and mm-hmm. you get run out of your house in the process. That... When you you can't do anything about that. I don't know if you're inside if the pepper ball is going to affect you. I don't, I don't know the specifics the either, but I can tell you that you, when somebody uses some sort of aggressive force against you, whether you feel whether it's justified or not from that person's standpoint, um, and you can't really sort of do anything about it, you didn't come to the conclusion on your own, then you feel disempowered, right? And disempowered people do all kinds of stuff. I'm not saying that at times people don't, the pepper ball shouldn't be employed, but you have to consider the consequences when you do. Well, intentional or not, it seems like in both the Ferguson cases and the, the Keen Pumpkin riots, the police have done a terrible job managing the crisis. If that's their responsibility, you know, is to keep peace, they're doing a bad job at that. And yeah. uh, using violence... In both cases, just not a very creative solution. And I say that they're doing possibly the worst job that they could be doing because you said they're releasing that information at 9 p.m. Well, if they're worried about riots, what time would be best to release that information? I would say 9 a.m. or 6 a.m. or something like that. Yeah, I agree with you. I think 6 a.m., maybe uh, midnight, maybe everyone's everyone's asleep or something. Who knows? Who knows? 9 p.m. is probably the worst time. Midnight is going to be more likely people are going to be have, having sort of alcohol-fueled systems at that moment. Could be. So I would say early morning hours. Early morning makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but yeah, it, it almost seems like they are ready to rock and roll here. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think that you know the police are, at least in the case in Keene and probably as we'll see in Ferguson, are not trained to de-escalate situations and if they were trained then they've been retrained because it seems like they made things worse here in Keene. that was the opinion of the young people that were down there that experienced it they said i had heard someone say that if the police hadn't broken up those parties that there wouldn't there wouldn't have been hundreds of people in the streets roaming about Mm -hmm. they didn't you know they shot up these parties and or threatened people you know showed up and said look you got to get out of this house or we're going to start arresting people at least at that time they were contained right they were in the houses in different houses and then they just broke up all these parties and so let's get all these people together in the streets drunken partiers who were then pissed because their party got broken up by the police that's no fun yeah. So now they want, then they want to get revenge on the system and the police, and so they start pulling signs out of the ground and they start throwing bottles because they're bored. They can't go in and you know go to a, another party because they probably think they're going to get kicked out of that too. And was it raining for part of the time during the riot? I, I believe at yeah. the time when they were it kicking the students out, it was raining. Yeah. So that's another insult to injury. Like, well, oh, they could, here I'm going to pepper ball you in your helms to make you come outside, and then you're in the rain. They could have gone, uh, oh, I don't know, home. Uh, in many cases, these people for, here from they out were of there town. to party. Yeah, they were indoors already. They were I forced outdoors. It was what one o'clock in the afternoon when the crackdown started. I don't know what time. I it thought was, that you said uh, I went down there around uh, six, but as from what I PM. heard, they started kicking people out of parties uh, at yeah. around one. And then, uh, you know, you started getting these roving people who had nowhere to really go and who were continuing to drink. Uh, and, you know, it just 
they made the situation worse. Yeah, and then they've well, got a bunch of open container violations, right? Because you're right. pushing people out of their uh, parties while they're still having fun and drinking. They're going to bring their cup with them, and then you've got a bunch of citations to our I think what the value to this is is that what all everything I've heard with, uh, from in Keene is is the police did a great job, and I suspect <laughs> that people are simply re- repeating what they hear mm-hmm. because there's always ways. Well, there to was be a re- sign down the street from the studio that was like, "Thanks, KPD." Yeah, um, that uh, probably the. Uh, the best way for police to learn is to see where the mistakes were made mm-hmm. and to try something new. Like, this is how you get better. And well, they, they, had, to- they tried something new this year, and it made things worse, in my opinion, because previous years had also had parties that were, you know, wild and loud and all that. Uh, there were a lot of people here for Pumpkin Fest in 2013, but we didn't have the same police response. And therefore, you didn't have the same kind of police state situation, which no doubt amped things up. I mean, they had a helicopter up there with a loudspeaker that was pumping out a warning to people that you better get out. This was at night. This was later on. You know, you better leave the area or else you'll be subject to being uh, arrested. Talk about a show of force. It really was. And then you've got multiple incidents that I saw on video. One of them I saw in real life where they were stopping people from going in a direction for no reason. Just because they set some arbitrary boundary up, they would stop people, and if they kept going, they'd arrest them for that. And so, again, just arresting people unnecessarily, shooting people unnecessarily, shooting at homes. So we'll see how Ferguson goes. We'll give you an update from there here in moments. 855 450 free. If you're on the ground, we want to hear from you, too. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an an effort to move 20,000 people who understand it's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. 
If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, announcement expected on the Ferguson grand jury decision later on tonight. Uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. So as we learn more about that, we'll certainly let you know. Apparently, there are protests already beginning and allegedly growing, according to a Reuters story. We can share more about that with you. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Feel free to reach out to us in that way and get yourself some free coffee, a free pound of coffee over at coffee.freetalklive.com. It's great coffee from BuzzBox, Shade Grown. 100% organic, top 1% grade Arabica. Plus, not only is it competitively priced with other high-end coffees, they also do something special that you're not going to find anywhere else, I don't think. Uh, Free Talk Live and BuzzBox and Kiva.org have teamed up to provide micro-loans to folks who are living in pretty tough parts of the world to give them a chance to make a better life for themselves. You can help with that by just getting some great coffee from coffee.freetalklive.com. Get on the auto-ship program. You get your first month free. You just pay the shipping cost. It's really simple. And then, of course, you can cancel any time. But if you stay on board, every 10 listeners that signs up at coffee.freetalklive.com, for every 10, uh, we can fund one new microloan to help make a better life for somebody somewhere in the world. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. We'll talk more about Ferguson here in a moment. We've got the pizza guy in North Dakota. Uh, you're on Free Talk Live Pizza Guy via Skype. Hey guys, I've been wanting to call in for a while and kind of touch on a topic. I, I don't know if I can explain it clear enough, but I'll, I'll give it my best shot. Okay. Um, I've been wanting to touch on the idea of the idea that maybe there's no bad guys. And, you know, that is to say that I think everybody has the best of intent. I mean, obviously there's people who are crazy in the head, but, you know, then they think it's best for them to rip someone's head off and eat the insides, right? But... I think the idea is that um, we can never really know what other people are thinking, and so that we always have to just kind of assume the best of intentions. What would you think about that? I absolutely agree with this uh, point. I'm constantly trying to uh, instill this in my son, Jack, who, you know, through the consumption of media as it's out there, has the opinion that there are good guys and bad guys. And he's six years old. And to him, bad guys are things that you kill on video games or um, in, you know, a cartoon or a show or whatever that they, you know, this is the other side. And I'll use term terminology like esteemed opponent and, you know, things like that in order to get him to realize that because this is it's a crutch. It's a mental crutch that people use constantly. I don't know. It may very well be inborn in us that there are good guys and bad guys because, that's how we had to operate in dealing with roving bands of other human beings that would kill, rape, consume, do whatever they would do. Like maybe we need it. Like that. That the likelihood if, is if they're not in your group, they are a bad guy, right? Like maybe the world is like that. I don't really know the answer to that, but I I I think that today it does a real disservice because the vast majority of people you run into want the same things you want. They just have different paths to get there. Derek J, you looked surprised when Mark said that he agreed with Pizza Dude on this. Yeah, because uh, the whole maybe there's no bad guys thing, immediately I was like, nope, there are bad guys. There are 
I've said this before. The thing about choices is after you make them, they turn around and make you. Well, some people murder, and I believe in objective morality, so I believe that's wrong. Well, I think you want to come maybe on, the, you know, the Christians have a great, and I'm super atheist here, they have a great saying, though, they say, um, hate the sin, not the sinner. I think that applies here extraordinarily well. I, I think every murderer probably has the, you know, especially uh, those who are in the military or the police force, uh, always have the best uh, excuses, right? And so telling them, oh, you're a murderer, you are evil is never Well, wait a minute, but with the police force, though, I mean, they've got the brainwashing, right, to believe that when they shoot somebody or with the military, that when they uh, when they kill somebody in another country, that it's somehow justified. Do you think that, uh, how, how would somebody who's just killing for the sake of killing without the whole official excuse, you know, just uh, Charles Manson or somebody like that, uh, although I guess he didn't do the actual killing. But my, you know, my point being, like a serial killer, who's a Jeffrey, Jeffrey Dahmer, Dahmer. Uh, the, the the clown guy. What was his name? John D- Gacy. Gacy. John Wayne, John Wayne Gacy. You know, somebody like that. I mean, what? But a- how many of those do you think there are? I well, mean, I, sure, thankfully maybe, not very maybe many. There's maybe in six billion people. There's I don't know a thousand. But it's but are they you know do they think they're good people like I get the point you're making and I tend to agree with it but I think Derek Jay's making a good counter to it you know I think that most people believe they're doing the right thing otherwise they wouldn't do it people going into government even though we know that they're using force against peaceful people and it's not right to do that it's not right to threaten people they believe the ends justify the means and they think that this is going to help society and that you got to break a few eggs to make an omelet they probably wouldn't qualify themselves as evil people so I agree to that extent uh i don't know what a john wayne gacy or uh, you know jeffrey dahmer would think but about my, their own actions my, my, my point is to say here that i i think you're extraordinarily underselling the number of people who who are you know crazy like john wayne gacy or whatever i i think there's such a small minority you say most uh uh i i think it's probably a percentage somewhere near 99.9 percent of all humanity i think most That's probably is, true too timid of a word i it's, yeah i and so I think, well, and so when people come on to this radio show, you know, sometimes they're uh, racist or sometimes they're um, from Arizona. And we have a tendency to think that they're uh, after us and that maybe, you know, they don't, uh, after they don't us? want to cooperate. What do you mean, they're, they, what do you they, mean they're after us? <laughs> that, that perhaps they, ha- they have the intention of of doing bad i you know, i always i frequently call in and and defend racists and nazis uh and like the slave trade uh because i i think it's important to understand that while those actions were evil um they weren't so bad <laughs> right they just what? had bad they had bad outcomes they had oh, yeah, bad i don't outcomes. really understand where you're where you're coming from there well, yeah what, you, what wasn't can't so bad about slavery well, who would pick and the cotton? racism. I mean, I think is what the question would be. I don't well, know. You figure I, it out. I, wait a minute. I think I understand sort of where Pizza Guy's coming from. He said that he's a super atheist, and I, I would be on the same page there. Uh, I was raised a Christian, now an atheist. And I understand sort of your, your comments about not disparaging people or putting them down. Is that sort of where you're coming from? Like you mentioned, uh, don't tell people, like, you're evil. And I wouldn't do that, but the point of me— I wouldn't do that either. I would say, that's wrong. Yeah, well, What you're po- doing is wrong. The point of figuring out who is good and evil is not so that you can tell them that. It's so that you can learn from it and guide yourself through this world and figure out who you want to be around based on their patterns of behavior. I think that people are looking for and maybe waiting for that great and powerful atrocity when really it's all around us. And I think I think that 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 the scales that the scales of history create a perspective where these great evil things look so obviously dark and evil, you know, looking back on them like the Holocaust, like the Holocaust. But when you're living in them, they're really quite more mundane. Right. Mundane? Uh, well, like, Mostly you didn't know as I understood it. Uh, right. I don't know if it would feel too mundane to be locked in a camp and then thrown in an oven. Yeah, or no, what no. about the stories of people who heard the screams from the trains that were passing by? You there think that are was mundane? Guantanamo Bay right now being tortured and waterboarded. I mean, you know, yeah, that's um, pretty evil as well. But the world is mundane. That's what I'm trying to say is that. All right. Hang on. I know we can continue the conversation in a moment here. I'm not sure if I really understand what he's getting at the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE 
Uh, you can take control of the airwaves. Now, did Hitler think he was evil? I doubt it. I doubt it. It's Free Talk Live. He's psycho, though. With autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. And it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season. Like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules, regularly $34.95, now only $25. HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95, now 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95, 60 capsules, now $10. Save on all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body, normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Specials button to save on all our natural cold and flu fighting products. Also explore our Herbal Healer Academy correspondence courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. For over eight years, Gary Lightman has been the chief executive officer and guiding force behind tech company Media Merge Incorporated. Lightman spoke to reporters this week about working his way up from his humble beginnings as a son of the previous CEO. If you would have told me 10 years ago that I would someday be the CEO of my dad's company, I would have said, absolutely not. I mean, it feels like just yesterday that I started off as a senior executive at this company and now, I'm in charge of the place. Lightman told reporters that he credits his continued success in business to a number of crucial moments in his career, including getting hired by his father, his father's retirement, and a few lucky breaks in between. I'm not going to lie to you. It was a lot of work. I was here for nearly eight hours every day. Someone clearly saw my efforts and took notice. You know, a lot of young people ask for my advice, and I always say the same thing. Work hard, and it will lead to bigger and better things. That's what I tell my kids. This is the Onion News Network. Majid lives in Nor Devin, Armenia, with his wife, kids, and grandkids, all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel it any time coffee.freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You are invited here to dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And join us online over at freetalklive.com. Please enjoy the features you'll find there. freetalklive.com. 
And if you care about your online privacy, you need to know about ProXPN. It's a global private network, a global virtual private network. And when you're connected to ProXPN, your connection to the Internet is encrypted, meaning your Internet service provider will be clueless about what you're doing online. Right now, they're probably logging all the sites you're visiting. You can stop that from happening. Go and just get started with ProXPN. Download their free software for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, Android devices as well. Plus, if you are a Linux user, there's a different setup for you, but it's actually pretty easy to do. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL, grab the software, and when you're ready to upgrade to the premium account to get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world access, you can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. You can use promo code FTL50 to save 50% off the price of their annual account, breaking the price down to around 5 bucks a month. Save even more with Bitcoin by paying for the annual account and using code FTLBTC, and you get 62% off of that annual account. You get it all with a risk-free 7-day money-back guarantee. And ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits at all. So use promo code FTL50 or FTLBTC at ProXPN.com slash FTL. It's a great discount on privacy that is priceless. We've got Pizza Dude on the line here, and I'm a little bit bewildered by some of the things he's saying about, well, I, I kind of agreed with the premise but Derek J, I also agree with where you're coming from. My understanding of the premise, and Mark, you say you, you're really kind of getting where he's coming from. So I'd like you to sort of recap what he's what he's been getting at so far. But my understanding has been that, well, all people, you know, believe they're good. That what they're doing, they wouldn't do if they didn't think it was the right thing to do. It and it may be a hard decision to, to make in many cases, but it has to be. It's for the best. Uh, Derek J brought up, you know, psychopaths, uh, killers, that kind of thing. You know, what about them? Uh, and uh, Mark, what's your interpretation of what well, Pizza Dude's saying here? Um, I think that, first off, the, pizza, he's still with us, the pizza Dude is dismissing uh, psychopaths because he's saying, look, you're talking about 0.1% of the population. I'm not talking about those nuts. I'm talking about the regular population, which I don't believe are necessarily good or bad. I believe that they operate by incentives, and they've been taught all their life that if you act good, that, um, you know, that the incentives will be in your favor in that case. So, um, you know, I think that that's sort of where we're going here. But I, I think that people do choose to do the right thing. Uh, they they want to do the right thing, and they're willing to make sacrifices from a societal level. They'll all act like a petty dictator and make a dis hard decision. And, uh, you know, that that's sort of where we're coming from. Is that about right? Sure. Well, and I, I think that loving your enemy means you, you have to look for the biggest enemy you can find and start and start there. And so I always go for the most disgusting, abhorrent uh, individuals that you can think of because when you start there, when you can when you can look at a historical Hitler in the eye in your mind and say, you know what, dude, I see where you were coming from and I forgive you that forgiveness. I think that, that that's where it I has think it's to important start. to point out that you're Jewish too. Sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, ethnically, I I am Jewish, but um, you know, Nazis have so never. If you so, me. if you can see where he's coming from, what does that mean? Because you made some disturbing statements before about you know past trauma like that, uh, like the Holocaust was mundane when you were in it, and I don't know if I agree with that. But what what is it that uh, you agree with where they were coming from, or where Hitler was coming from? It's about having perspective and a sense of proportion to understand that these great atrocities, you, you, you don't have one Goliath of evil, right? It's not, it's not Hitler. If Hitler hadn't been there, somebody else would have stepped in. If you think about like even the – I mean if we want to get in the weeds of Nazi Germany, if you think about the, the Jews, um, they, they were an immigrant population who had all these different religious things that allowed them to take certain advantages of the marketplace. And there was a lot of resentment. If it hadn't been Hitler, it would have been somebody else who had stepped up and been like, oh, we need to stop this, right? Just like uh, people hate um, Muslims right now. Well, I don't know if that's true, and but, but I, let's, let me address that with the, uh, the Jews right now. So obviously what's true up to that point with uh, – um, is the you know the the dislike of Jews in in Europe was certainly rife, and you can still see it today in certain people. Like you can hear, you can talk to people and hear this uh, this uh, this sort of uh, attitude. But I think what the uh, Holocaust did was it turned a corner when it came to hate of Jews. Like now, before the the Holocaust, it was okay to dislike Jews for whatever reason you dislike Jews. After the Holocaust. You are an effing Nazi if you hate Jews. So, like, there's a 
turn because something so horrible occurred. Without the Holocaust, we may very well be living in a world where it is still okay to just dislike Jews because they're Jewish. Well, that's certainly a very speculative statement. It's just I mean, a statement. we didn't we didn't need a holocaust to make it so that slavery was unacceptable to people. But there, and we didn't but need a you holocaust have a hate of blacks in this country that still hasn't changed. We didn't need a holocaust to have more acceptance of gay people in uh, the United States. So still plenty of hate hating on gays. There's plenty the war- of hate on Jews too. I'm I don't not understand advocating for holocausts, Ian. <laughs> The war on drugs is just as bad as Nazi Germany, I guess is what I'm saying. And the only way you can see that perspective and understand that... Wait a minute, actually, there are no ovens during the drug war. There's just mass can incarceration. You, can you really make that comparison? There, so, okay, so here's... let's Okay, fine. So There's mass incarceration of, and forced labor. Yeah, let's go into people. politics of Nazi Germany. There were no ovens in Nazi Germany either. They had crematoriums that when the Americans showed up, they're like, oh, no, we need to uh, run away. And what are you going to do? Leave them behind to tell the Americans where they went or bring them with you? Well, they brought them with them. We call those death marches. Or um, they executed them because they couldn't leave the prisoners behind. And so it was a, a a bad decision in a bad situation when they got caught at the end. All they really wanted to do. Are you saying? Was I mean, I, mean, I can't of, say I'm an expert on World War II. Are you? Are you claiming that the execution of Jewish people and others, because other people were executed as well, was due to logistics and not yes, due to the, wanting the to exterminate people? Yes. Yes, definitely. There, I mean, there were atrocities. There were lampshades made of human flesh and terrible experiments done all in the name of science. But um, yes, the like rounding them up, throwing them into ovens, that was like, oh no, we're overpopulated. What do we do? I don't know. We'll take the lowest ranking ones and, and destroy them. I or, think oh, that no, saying that really, I, I think, diminishes the value of those lives. I mean, just like, you know, to, obviously these people were sick that they could just think that way oh well we've got to lighten the load a little bit here let's just set some people on fire i'm saying I mean, this the is psycho stuff I, i'm saying that by putting on a pedestal those single large atrocities it diminishes the collective myriad of tiny atrocities that happen day to day every day around this world all the time the world is a sick evil and terrible place and there really are Did you just, no s- wait weren't you just arguing that people are good now you're saying the world is a sick evil place Yes, it's a sick, evil place filled with people. Every- that's well, that's just see, like th- your opinion, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's this a is, dizzying this is opinion. The scariest, well, this is the scariest part, and this is what keeps me up at night. This is what's so scary, is that this this world we have with all the sickness and all the atrocity, this is what it looks like when everyone's doing their best. Like, wow, that's, that's a really that's, negative that's, viewpoint. I bet Mark agrees with you because he's uh, he's got a real similar <laughs> well, sick viewpoint. I um, I don't know. I think that you say evil... things about not you know believing in people and things like that. What do you mean? I've heard you say things that are like very kind of oh anti-human. yeah. I generally don't. I generally think about eighty percent of the population is dogs. Um, but sick. No, and it's not that I think you should necessarily treat them like dogs. I think they act like them. They come when called. They heal when told. Um, you know, they, that, that, that's what they are. They they are human dogs. But See, I have a totally different viewpoint. I think the world is a wonderful place, and there's so much good in the world, and whatever evil there is, is you know dimin- is very minimal compared to all of the good in the world. And, and that's, that's why a, that's we're able... That's a really safe point of that's view. That's why we're it? able to go around, walk down the street, and enjoy our lives, and have so much leisure because we're not constantly concerned about being you know destroyed by people when we're out in the streets and tackled and torn oh, I didn't say limb bad from dogs. Limb. Okay. Anyway, go ahead, uh, Pizza Dude, your final thoughts. Yeah, well, just um, that, you know, love and peace is the answer, and the only way you're going to find that is by forgiving everybody so that you can identify what the real evil actions are to stamp those out completely. Well, I agree with forgiveness. Uh, the viewpoint on the world, though, not so much. Thanks for the call. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number. 855-450-3733. Is the world an evil place filled with good people? Very strange. What do you think? It's Free Talk Live. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's 
the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, "Let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas." There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. The experts at web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current web.com customers. We've used and, and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Freedomsphoenix.com constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy, health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative. Freedomsphoenix.com. Constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways. With liberty and property under constant attack, FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda, and it encourages the participation of its readers. Go to FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's Freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com. The revolution between the ears has already happened. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the Internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, dial in here, toll free, take control of the airwaves, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. The decision from the grand jury in Ferguson is expected here in, uh, what, about an hour and a half, hour and 15 minutes or so. We'll give you the details on that as we learn more. There's apparently some protests that have already begun. We can give you an update on that story. Uh, of course, also other stuff to talk about Let's tonight. Let's protest including, things that have not yet occurred. <laughs> including gay jeans. Not like jeans you wear, but jeans <laughs> that sort of make up biology. And uh, also a police chief who is actually revealing the brutality uh, in, is it his own department, Derek yes. J? Yes, yes. Shocking story. We'll hopefully get a chance to talk about that, too, especially amongst uh, the news about Ferguson, where likely we will be seeing the police misbehaving uh, in short order. 
the uh, does, does do you guys have any more comments on this idea that the world was uh, is an evil place? I, I'd like to hear Derek J. I guess your thoughts on on that assertion because our last caller, Pizza Dude, suggested first the sort of this bizarre, contradictory sounding position that most people in the world are good. In fact, he said ninety nine point nine percent of them they believe that they're good, but yet he said this is a evil world what uh, what do you think about that sure so here's what i've learned about the world so far it's all in your head everything is all in your head so you've got a whole big world out there and uh you have to use your imagination and the quote i was just saying to mark here earlier during the break was when you change the way you look at things the things you look at change and i say that because mm, because yeah. it is is it all in your head it's you the world starts with your attitude first so like you are the you know person experiencing this reality so your perception is the, is where everything starts and so if you adjust that perception that lens to capture certain things that's what you'll see and so people who adopt this lens of the world's a bad place that's what they see they and they see get that, that confirmation bias yeah. yeah and so when people change their attitude which is really the only thing you can change, mm. right? The only thing you can control. You can't control what goes on in the world out there, but you can control your own attitude and your own perception of the world, and then you start to see the nice things. So I totally agree. If you color your lens with uh, optimism, do you then see truth? Is what I want to know because what I really want to know is truth. I don't want to know. Um, I don't want a colored lens of pessimism, and I don't want a colored lens of optimism. I want to know what the truth in the world is. And if when you say it's all in my head, here's a question that kind of comes up for me: Are you saying that the ex you're saying that your reality is your perception, and are you saying that I'm some kind of automaton here to help you experience the world you need to experience, or am I a real live breathe living? breathing human being or just a perception that you're having well i wouldn't know the difference okay. yeah you can't prove uh you can't prove it's anything but a perception i declare myself a real live living human being very persuasive and I, I believe I've had a you difficult i treat time. you like a real person <laughs> too. I, I, <laughs> it's a good idea and i've had a very difficult time deciding that the rest of you people are real but i'll go ahead and say that the best way to handle this is to treat you as though you are okay i tend to agree so about this lens of truth thing, if I choose to see the world in an optimistic manner, mm -hmm. am I then choosing to see the world in a way that is untrue? Or uh, is reality... No, I'm, asking a I'm asking a question. You don't answer it with a question, Mr. Philosopher. <laughs> you answer the damn question. Well, I have no answer for you, uh, but what I was <laughs> going to say... The answer is yes. If you color your lens with optimism, you no longer you see You are truth. presuming that there's an objective reality. You're right. I am. I have to operate. Oh, so I, are you. I assume because you an look both ways. Reality. Before you walk across but the street, but you can't prove it. You look both ways. You cannot yeah. prove it, but I can prove your ass will be dead if you walk in front of enough cars. Mm. Well, to argue against an objective uh, reality would be to use words and meanings that have, uh, you know, an objective meaning, and you would to make the argument you would be using objective reality. So it sort of is uh, self implosive. Run that by me one more time. You, it, if I were to say. There's no such thing as a objective truth. And well, then, I'm using words that have meaning that we both agree have the same objective meaning. It doesn't and so sound I'm using, like near mm -hmm. mom. Yeah, right. Yeah. So there That's we have. That's how you would correctly make the argument. Yeah, yeah, no. Truth. <laughs> oh no, what you're talking about. Sure, we have uh, definitions of words within our you know apparently you know existing reality. But if what Derek J was saying before is true, and that is that uh, your thoughts sort of affect your experiences and you know what's coming to you. I don't claim they don't. Then, uh, then that could suggest, you know, so the many worlds theory or whatever, the idea that you know every choice that you make uh, sort of branches off a new universe. There's, you know, there's a no, chance no. that a theory is a scientific term yeah. that means that there's some proof to suggest that what the hell you're talking about has any validity. What you're talking about is a fantasy. What about it's a, a hypothesis? You can't prove it. It's a hypothesis, right? You can't prove what I'm comes saying. Before the Fine. Theory. You can't prove what I'm saying. I'll admit that, but you also can't prove that there's objective reality. I, I I think that there yes I I don't have to because you prove every day there's objective reality. You, what is that supposed you, to when mean? When you get pricked, you bleed. Yeah, um, everyone I mean, everyone that acts, doesn't prove anything. Everyone acts like there is objective. Right, certainly, and it's in your best interest <laughs> to act as though there because is. Because there is.
is. <laughs> <laughs> you can't prove it though. Sorry. I don't need to. You can't even prove you're here. I mean, you can't. Uh, all you can. All you can know when is your what your senses of, are. When the basis of your argument is blue is not blue, you have no argument. That's not my argument. That's not my argument at all. But I I understand where you're coming from, Mark, with the the. A problem with people coloring their lenses of perception and saying, I'm going to see the world this way or I'm going to see the world that way. And they're not seeing the truth. Like, that is that is a great concern to me. Like, am I coloring? Am I finding the truth? And do you need to color your lens uh, of reality in order to have happiness? Well, I should hope not. I well, should hope that truth would bring us to happiness without the lens. For uh, the caller earlier, the truth is that the world is an evil place. But for you, that's not your, it's not your truth. I don't think that that's what he said. He said that people are sort of good and that um, in the process of being good, they can do many evil things. I believe— He said the world is an evil place. He the, said that. There t- the, the, the worst sort of evil— is a great is a person who has a great reached great status that believes mm. they're doing something. I good. agree with that. Mark's in Tampa. You're on Free Talk Live, listening to LRN.FM. Hello, Mark. Oh, hello. I'd like to uh, bring up a topic about uh, how small local governments uh, are are good. Like, first of all, I want to say, like, I agree with most of what you guys say, and I like your ideas and everything. But I think you're, you're kind of wrong on one topic. What's that? Or or maybe don't think it through. Like, if you let the free market decide on any good and service, I think that can be bad. And let me give you my example. Sure. Um, I I lived in a community up in Ohio. It was a small community, and the government, you know, provided all the services like most do with the garbage pickup and the clear the road, snow plow, and all that sort of thing. Police, fire, and our taxes were were what I would consider relatively low. And they provided a lot of service. And I feel like if you uh, let the free market decide on these services, and I just want to use like garbage pickup for an example, I think it's careful what you wish for because in uh, something like that where they're going to pick, you know, let everybody decide who's going to pick up their garbage, for example, different companies competing for that. I think that could be a fail because I think a lot of people, well, maybe not a lot, but a few people will decide, well, you know, I don't have to pay for it out of my taxes anymore. I got to pick somebody. Well, I'm just going to throw my neighbor, my garbage in my neighbor's pile, or I'm just not, I'm going to let my pot, my garbage stack up for a month and then maybe I'll call somebody. So I think a lot of times a local small government is good and it works. I'll take that one. So here in Keene, New Hampshire, uh, it's a town of 22,000, not exactly a hamlet, um, we have private garbage pickup. And, uh, you know, the pricing is a commensurate to what I was used to in Sarasota, Florida, not exactly a hamlet either, where uh, they had public uh, garbage pickup. But I've got to say the one difference is is that in Sarasota, your garbage had to be in separate containers. Um, your your little sticks had to be tied in bundles and in uh, certain lengths when you had your yard trash out. They would literally leave trash on your lawn if it was not properly collated, spindled, and, uh, and, and alphabetically filed. I mean, they would, they would do things like that. Alphabetically filed, obviously, that's not literally. But they would leave trash on your lawn if it does not meet their standards. Here, I do not have such trouble, um, and we don't have people who, appear, apparently, I have not seen in the eight years living in Keene, New Hampshire, the problem that you're talking about, this person that allows garbage to pile up. or you know. I have seen, uh, when I first got this, when we moved here, uh, the studio that we're broadcasting from was a duplex home. And one of the sides of the duplex, there was garbage piled in the back, bags of garbage. I don't know how many weeks worth of it. Uh, maybe they didn't contract. Uh, yeah, that they sounds just, right. You know, yeah. They were renters, and they forgot that oh, situation. Throw it. Oh, throw it in the back room. Uh, but that doesn't justify having forced gar- uh, garbage pickup, forcing everybody to pay into the same monopoly group. I want to bring you back, Mark. If you've got time, we'll uh, hold you. I get the same the prices hour. and better service now. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll bring you yeah. back here in moments. Uh, you can continue to explain why local government, he says, is good. It's Free Talk Live. 
Kay Oliver is part of the Toyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, November 24th, 2014. Gold closed Friday at $1,201, up $8. Silver closed at $16.45, up $0.22. And Bitcoin is trading around $368.15. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by eFoods Direct redefining the way you think about storable food. They've created a menu of food that's so good, so easy to make, you'll find yourself eating it every day, even though it has a shelf life of up to 25 years. eFoods Direct is offering 10% off to all Liberty Beat listeners. Just go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Beat for your savings today. In the news, on Saturday, former CIA analyst Ray McGovern spoke in New York City as part of an event calling attention to the classified 28 pages of the Senate's report on 9-11. The outspoken critic of the federal government gave a talk titled The Surveillance Pseudostate, released the 28 pages. McGovern was joined by former U.S. Attorney General Ramsey Clark and Terry Strada, a 9-11 family member. If House Resolution 428 passed, it would force the release of the classified 28 pages of the larger Senate report. The American Civil Liberties Union has filed a Freedom of Information Act request regarding the recently exposed U.S. Marshal Service program that uses aircraft to gather cell phone data. The Wall Street Journal reports that the Marshal Service was using Cessna planes equipped with cell site simulators, sometimes known as stingrays, at at least five airports across the nation. The so-called dirt boxes are supposed to be used for criminal investigations, but the ACLU says they can collect data from tens of thousands of people on each flight. The Obama administration says it's been reporting too high a figure for health law signups because of accounting mistakes. It's another embarrassment after video surfaced recently of a former advisor suggesting that deception was used to pass President Barack Obama's signature law. Healthcare law opponents say it's no innocent mistake. They say the numbers were padded. The Liberty Beat is made possible by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. And support also comes from Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. 
This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, November 24th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelibertybeat. Judge William A. Fletcher with the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals has said the ATF's use of reverse stings is a waste of resources and encourages people to commit crimes they otherwise wouldn't commit. Judge Fletcher made the comments as part of an ongoing battle between federal prosecutors and lawyers for two men accused of drug conspiracy and robbery conspiracy charges. The charges were recently dropped after a district judge ruled the government engaged in outrageous misconduct. After a fourth straight night of low-level protests in Ferguson, Missouri, anxious residents still did not know yesterday when a grand jury would return a decision on whether to charge a white policeman who shot an unarmed black teen to death this summer. The Wall Street Journal, citing an unidentified St. Louis County official, reports the 12-member grand jury adjourned and was to resume meeting behind closed doors today. Reuters could not confirm that report. Engineers with the University of Washington have tested a contact lens that can receive information through a heads-up display. The contact lens is flexible and imprinted with electronic circuit and lights and could potentially provide new methods of communication and surfing the Internet. The researchers tested the lenses on rabbits for up to 20 minutes and reported no adverse effects. The Liberty Beat is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? Well, the Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To inquire further, visit thelibertybeat.com slash advertise. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, November 24th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. This is the Onion Week in Review. Quiet and reserved temp Kevin Bright surprised his co-workers this week when they discovered that the mild-mannered 27-year-old was actually an untalented singer-songwriter. How did I get here? It's probably a tree. Bright, who mostly keeps to himself at work, usually spends his free time embarrassing himself at open mics across the city, and that underneath his meek and soft-spoken exterior is a terrible guitarist with no musical sensibility whatsoever. You see him in the office, he's this quiet, reserved kid, and you would never think, oh, he's got a great voice and a wonderful stage presence, and you'd be totally right. In other news, an Ohio Film Festival graphic designer decides to go with film reels for the O's, and getting grandma into a family reunion t-shirt is a three-person job. The entire the entire 144-minute cut of this week's review is available now for just $11.99 on Laserdisc. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You are invited here to take control of the airwaves at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We'll update you as we know more from the situation on the ground in Ferguson, Missouri. The grand jury decision is expected tonight as to whether or not to indict uh, the, uh, the officer in question down there from back when the riots were happening. We'll let you know more as we learn more. The we tonight includes me, Ian. Derek J. And Mark. We're going back to Mark in Tampa. He is listening via LRN.FM. He made the statement earlier, uh, right before the break, that he believes local government can be good. And he cited garbage collection as an example. Now, Mark, you countered by pointing out that here in our very own Keene, New Hampshire, and in the town surrounding Keene, New Hampshire, uh, there is private garbage collection, meaning that the government does not offer that as a service, and we don't see heaps and heaps of piles of garbage, people throwing garbage on their neighbor's lawn or anything like that. Uh, it's really, as you said, Mark, you get better service for about the same price point. Well, I don't saying? use, uh, I don't do private. Um, I know what you pay, mm -hmm. and I know what I paid when I was in living in Sarasota and Manatee counties, approximately. That was what my tax bill was. Yep. And uh, I was kind of surprised, honestly, when you're talking about economies of scale, you would think that you could do better 
with one company being contracted to pick up garbage. Because as I understand it, most municipalities don't actually pick up garbage. They contract with organizations, you know, waste management and people like That's that, right, yeah. to pick up garbage. and A monopoly pickup. When you can offer all the business in a geographic area, it gets more efficient. Here okay. in Keene, when I believe it's a company called ABC, somebody really yep, went out, right. out on a limb to uh, name this uh, garbage pickup company. That means you get seen first in the phone book, typically. And they uh, you know, they, they don't pick up the garbage to the people next door. They have to go several houses down the street or wh- yeah, around the true. corner or it's whatever not as efficient. to pick up garbage. But yet so, they manage to be at the same similar price point. Same price point and better service. So let's bring Mark back on uh, because he was saying that government locally could be good, and I'd like you to further uh, expound on your, your thoughts there, Mark. Yes. Uh, I, I'm not saying it's the answer, but I, I'm, I guess I'm more saying, like, careful what we wish for because here's just something that pops in my head. Like, for example, it could work either way. It could work the government. I've seen an example where the government running uh, a county or a city does a very good job. And obviously, your example, doing the garbage pickup, they do a good job. But if, like, a local area or a state, you know, says, okay, everybody can choose for themselves, and then some, you know, there's, you know, 10 different companies competing for your business. Well, the way I see it is eventually one of those companies is going to become bigger than the rest and take over. And then, well, this is just let me finish for a second. Like, I don't know how, but they'll provide the cheapest price and maybe the best service, and then Sounds eventually horrible. one company will, will run the whole thing. But that then, hasn't I, happened. I picture, Where has right, that happened? Right, I, when you look at economics and markets throughout the last, give it a hundred years, when has that occurred? Well, well, this is what I think. I think I look at Walmart. I hate Walmart. I think Walmart's one of the worst companies. But yet, look at they're they're everywhere, and they run a lot of like local hardware stores out of business and that sort of thing. We've got local because, hardware stores here in Keene. Well, uh, this isn't a hundred percent. I'm just using this as an example. Okay. This but is all the I examples you're giving, we happening. have counterpoints to from real life. Like you're saying, this speculative idea about well, uh, one garbage company is going to knock all the rest out of business. Well, yep. we've had private garbage here forever, and that hasn't happened. When I was a kid, um, I'm trying to. I lived in a world where there was no Walmart. I'm, I'm the. I think the only one on the show that uh, grew up in a really? in a community where there was no okay. Walmart. Um, in Bradenton, Florida, I think the first Walmart showed up when uh, in the mid '80s okay. or something like that. And at that point, I'm already in high school, so uh, I don't know. I can't really remember where we got the plastic crap that we did. We, we lived our lives with, but I think we got it at the grocery store and at Kmart and uh, a variety of other stores sure. that sort of filled in those niches. I don't think there was a uh, mom and pop shop that did that filled the plastic crap from. Japan, which at the time it would have been more likely Japan than China, the plastic crap from Japan uh, niche, I just don't think it existed. There were certainly hardware stores, and there's small hardware stores today, probably in your community and certainly in mine. There were clothiers, haberdashers. Um, they're still they're still around and kicking. There were grocery stores. They're still there. Pet shops. All the niches that Walmart attempts to fill, it doesn't do anything but perhaps run the worst one in the uh, the town out of business. I mean, you wouldn't propose, Mark, for uh, you know the government to take over distribution of toiletries and the other things that you find at Walmart, would you? No, no. And I, maybe I'm not making my point as clear. I hate the government. I, I really do. I think they're, it's lousy. But for the services they provide, I'm just, you know, water, sewer, uh, uh, garbage collection, and all the local services. The money that I pay in my real estate taxes is... It's really like a uh, – uh, it's not that big of a deal to me because I'm paying a, a, a price, and then they're providing these services. I, I, there's bigger fish to fry, in my opinion, is the federal government. That's the one that – See, the federal uh, government um, doesn't scare me nearly as much because I don't deal with them. If you choose not to file income tax like tens of millions of Americans have uh, chosen not to do, the chances are good that you're not going to feel the bite of the federal government. If you choose not to pay into the system, the, the local system, because, say, you find public schools, which is – in most communities, the uh, lion's share of the cost, you find the abhorrent uh, government indoctrination centers that indoctrinate people on the federal um, the federal government is good. If you choose not well, to, to participate in that, they'll take your house away lickety-split. You will be homeless within inside of five years. 
Right, but at least the way I look at it, and I believe me, I'm on your side. I, I think the government does suck overall, but at least I get something back when I pay my real estate taxes. I see nothing in return with my that okay. comes out of my. I understand taxes. where you're coming yeah, from, I agree with and that's not. I, look, I understand where you're coming from, and it's not uncommon for people to say they feel satisfied with the level of services He's they're getting from that. the local. That's what I'm hearing him saying. Right. He's sounding like he's getting a good deal. Oh, yeah, I'm paying this money, money, and I'm getting all these services. Well, what about people well, uh, who aren't satisfied? What about the people who are uh, sick and tired of the local government? Like you said, Mark, they don't like the schools, or maybe they don't like the police and how they treat people. They can't say no. They can't say, I refuse to consent. I don't want to pay for these services. Because if they don't, or if they if they refuse to pay, then as Mark pointed out, and as you agreed, the government goons will come and steal their home from them. That's not okay, right? No, see, and that's where I don't have an answer for that. Yeah. I, and I, agree I look, with you I got no problem with water. I have no problem with roads. I have no problem with trash pickup. But let's let people consent and choose who they want to provide these things, rather than forcing a one-size-fits-all monopoly system down on them. And I thank you for the call tonight, Mark. I mean, look, I, I get where he's coming from. I mean, on the scale of governments, the local government is the one that you can have some level of influence on, maybe, although I don't know if you're in, if you're in Tampa, you could really have much of an influence. Here in Keene, New Hampshire, it's a town of 22,000. It's easier to know who the politicians are and kind of know the scene and, and be involved in that and actually have some sort of sway. Uh, but still, it's an inefficient system, and it's a system that people are coerced into participating in, and that's not okay. Good ideas don't require force. Yes. People love choices, so why not open up the market to choices? When he said allowing the free market to decide some things could be bad, bells went off in my head. <laughs> because Well, I, I, well, I want to hear the because. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. He paused. What, I, I wanted to know what is the free market to him, to Mark, because mm. I have a, a feeling we probably have a different definition. To me, the free market is me, you, individuals getting to decide for ourselves what we want, we get to opt into services or goods. We get different mm. choices. But uh, the the lack of a free market would be where choices are made on my behalf, for me, without my consent. So um, when you have a situation with a local government, it's, you know, it's, it's any government writ small, right? Um, they get to make decisions for you that you may not wish to make. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm fine with the trash pickup, but I'm not so fine with the school. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and in that circumstance, I don't have a choice because they've decided for themselves that they are the Lord of the kingdom and that they will make the decisions. You're going to have to pay for these schools. If a government if you give a government the ability to make a decision that you will you will be forced into one contract, then you, they can make a decision that you will be forced into any contract. It, what stops the local government from saying, nah, you're going to have to pay you know, this amount so that everybody has oatmeal in the morning or whatever. <laughs> you know, they, just, it, 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 they can step into any sector and say, you've got to pay now. Toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. You can take control of the airwaves. Also, the latest from Ferguson still to come, as well as gay jeans and a police chief. We'll tell you what he did coming up. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a 
powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial in toll free and bring up anything you want at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Go to freetalklive.com to enjoy the features that are waiting for you there. With you tonight, you've got Ian. Derek J. And Mark. Get more of Derek J. on his website, his blog, which links to all kinds of media efforts that he's involved in. Uh, DerekJ.me. What will people find at DerekJ.me? They'll find videos mostly of uh, things that are happening around Keene. Lately in my life, I've been working at a new thrift store, so there's some footage of that. Um, but, oh gosh, it, it hasn't been much lately as because I've been working at that thrift store, starting a new life. So uh, entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial efforts happening here in Keene. I am not the entrepreneur, but uh, I am capturing what is happening here. And there are lots of different challenges for entrepreneurs. For example, the city government came mm-hmm. and tried to stop the entrepreneur from putting a sign outside, uh, I think, something as simple as that. I th- I'm glad you actually brought that up because I think it ties into the discussion we were just having with our last caller about how he believes that local government can be good. And then he goes on to cite how Walmart he thinks is terrible and that they put small businesses out of business. But I think it's important to acknowledge that we don't have a free market today and that Walmart is much better able to negotiate with governments as far as you know getting land and property property tax uh, variations and things like that uh, in order to like frequently a Walmart will negotiate things like you know f- no property taxes for five years before if, if a city will allow them to build their store in a place that kind of thing uh, whereas a small business owner they get treated like dirt and they come in they get there nothing. and 
Yeah, there's nothing, and there's all these uh, permits and requirements, and there's so many different hoops to jump through in order to open your own business. And, and so in some places, there's more than others, and uh, that's not friendly. That's not a good thing to do to prevent people from going into business. No wonder there's fewer mom-and-pop businesses. It's hard as hell to start a business because of the local governments. There's a, say, a truism in business called that says, big loves big. Mm. And what that means is, is that big organizations like Walmart – can do business with big organizations like municipalities. Mm -hmm. um, it's much easier for them to speak. Uh, they speak each other's languages. They understand yeah. these things. Whereas, uh, you know, they don't have this whole... I mean, cities have tried to address this with, like... Um, entrepreneurial zones and things like that. So start a business in this area and you'll get a tax credit for, you know, this period of time. But if you've got a business that's a block away already in place, what are you supposed to do there? You're supposed to You're screwed. Uh, take all the, um, uh, you know, disadvantages of picking up and moving your business a block over. You know, maybe you've that been there be for worth 30 it years. Because you've got a location and people yeah. know where you are. So Bitcoin, we're going to get to your calls coming up. Bitcoin is still on the rise, and to prove it to you, you can head down to the Texas Bitcoin Conference. It's going to be a few months, March 28th through the 29th in downtown Austin, Texas. It's going to be taking place at the Moody Theater, and it'll be loaded up with the best and brightest speakers and the latest exhibitions in Bitcoin. Plus, they'll be hosting the second million dollar bitcoin 2.0 hackathon they've even invited some undesirables the entire texas legislature to allow them to see firsthand that not enacting complicated regulations encourages innovation and job creation the texas bitcoin conference will prove bitcoin is a force for good if you're knee deep in bitcoin or just interested this is the place to be march 28th and 29th and they've even got a kickoff event on the 27th if you get there early uh so go and check out more over at texasbitcoinconference.com that's texasbitcoinconference.com free talk live will be attending we were there last year it was great last year for a first year event and i expect they will have tweaked it uh, they've changed the location this year so i'm excited about going back texasbitcoinconference.com march 28th and the 29th in Austin. All right, let's go uh, to your calls and thoughts. We've got Kevin. He's on the line. Whoa! Is that music from Kevin? That might be music from me somewhere. I apologize about that, Kevin. We're going to see if we can uh, fix that and find out where that audio is coming from. Uh, but first, we will go to... Actually, you know what? We might have Kevin back here now. Kevin, are you there with us? Yeah, I'm here. I'm I love here. things I'm that here. autoplay on the internet. Aren't those just Sounded handy? Like your computer was going on an adventure. Uh, it was something on a Facebook window that was just auto-playing. Anyway, go ahead, Kevin. You're on the air. Can you, can you hear me okay? Yes, yeah? you're calling from across the yeah. pond. No, I'm on that. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, I'd just like to say straight off, um, thank you very much for introducing me to Liberty. You're welcome. You and your show. Um, I was listening to podcasts, I think it was back in 2003. I just, um, I just got into the internet and, well, no, I've been in for a little while, but... Um, I just randomly hit a popular podcast and I come across you guys. And you've been listening to Free Talk Live since two thousand three. Two thousand three, four is it? Incredible! That's, That's before we even had a podcast. Now you were listening oh, via no, just no, no, no. direct download well, archives back then, huh? Archives then. Very archives. cool. Very cool. Old yeah. school listener, first um, time uh, you've ever called in. So, what did you want to share with us tonight? Um, right. Okay. I I, I love what you're doing. I love what you're doing over in um, New Hampshire. Um, I think that if Liberty is going to make its mark again, it has to it has to start in your country. Um, obviously, you know that the history of all, the, all the philosophical arguments about liberty came from my country, and um, hopefully you recognise that, and it was it was carried forward, but. My country's absolutely lost at the minute. Um, so I'd just like to say a big up to what you're doing over there. Thanks, and man. And all, all power to the message you're getting across. What message However, do you want to get across tonight, though? I mean, the, I appreciate the, the, the kudos. It's not, it's not, it's, 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 no, no, it's, no, I, I, I love every, everything. I, I listen to LRF, RNFM all the time, and I get some, I get, I, Awesome, absolutely awesome. Oh, cool, man. I'm glad you're enjoying the show, and I want to thank you for the call not tonight. Just, not just your show, not just your show. Great. LRN.FM um, does have a lot of great shows, including Derek J's Peace News oh, Now, and I thank you for the call tonight. I just, you know, I appreciate the kudos. I appreciate the the back padding, but to me, it's just not 
something, you know, call in about something else. Because if we, all we did was take people who were like, hey, thanks for doing the show, it'd be, it'd be a pretty boring show. So not to say I don't appreciate the call. I do. Just want to try to dissuade people. It's from nice to get an accent in and uh, yeah. folks that yeah. have been listening for a very long time. That's true. So let's go to uh, Jacob. He's in Washington listening via the TuneIn service. Hey, Jacob. Hey, guys. How's it going? Welcome, sir. Um, I, I would have called you guys a little bit earlier. I was right in the middle of a, a small business transaction. Ha, ha, ha. Uh-huh. Anyways. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, go ahead. Yeah. The red tape here in Washington is killing me. That's funny that you guys were talking about that. It's like one thing after another. Yikes. Like, so you business owner? Yeah, I am uh, multiple in, in the marijuana business, and they've made it completely impossible. Wow, I was right. You possible. actually are in the marijuana business. That's funny. I, I just, really am. You made it pretty clear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, but uh, besides that, um, it, it really twinged on my nerve the, the last hour you guys were on. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I'm, I'm in the Libertarian Party, and uh, we did mm-hmm. awesome in Washington. We got eight through in, in remarkable eight. numbers. Oh, uh, the proposition? Uh, no, eight, eight people through for running what? for an election. Really? Uh, Hold House on. Representative. The Libertarian you Party? Eight? Representatives yeah. elected in Washington from the Libertarian Party? No, 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 no. They got through the primaries. We have a two-stage system. Okay, in our okay, state. I got you. Libertarians and, have and primaries? primaries. Well, no. There's these yeah. are there's states where only the top two candidate uh, vote getters from the primary right. manage to go on to the uh, the next election. But they so include the Libertarian on the primary ballot in Washington, is what you're saying? Right. Fascinating. Right. We'll yeah, come back with more here. You can tell the rest of your story. Uh, Jacob, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. Our Skype username, by the way, is LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live. For all our loyal listeners, it's time for another giveaway. Over the next 30 days, our friends at SupernaturalSilver.com are giving away six 16-ounce Supernatural Silver liquids valued at nearly $100 per bottle or their skin and body gel priced at $49.98. All you have to do is enter and win at GCNlive.com. Hurry, contest ends December 5th. GCN can give you and your loved ones a fighting chance with the Supernatural Silver giveaway at GCNlive.com. This holiday season, give the gift that keeps on giving, an in-home freeze dryer from Harvest Right. With your very own freeze dryer, you'll be able to freeze dry the food your family loves. Because we live in uncertain, difficult times, what better way to show your love for your family than to buy them a gift that helps them preserve food they can use now or in 25 years. Go to HarvestRight.com and find out how you can get your in-home freeze dryer. Layaway is available. That's HarvestRight.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Thank you. 
So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls toll-free. Coming up, uh, the latest on Ferguson. What's going on there? The news is supposed to be released after 9 p.m. Eastern as far as what was the grand jury's decision. I think it's fairly predictable, but we'll find out more as that uh, time approaches. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Joining you in the LRN.FM studio, it's Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. Don't forget to join us online at freetalklive.com. Do you have Bitcoin and need a car? New Age Auto Sales has late model used cars that they've cared for and from their rental fleet. And since New Age Auto Sales is selling their own well-maintained cars, you don't have to pay for the auction fees and the transport costs, which are wrapped into pretty much every other used car that you're going to buy. Don't even get me started on new cars. Um, their cars are in great condition, and they're priced to move. They can ship them anywhere in the world. So go to NewAgeAutoSales.com and see what they've got. If you're, They're looking to be the Bitcoin auto dealer. But obviously, if you see something that you like and you don't have enough Bitcoin, they can help you with that, too. With Bitcoin, your money never needs to be exchanged into dollars. It's NewAgeAutoSales.com for late model, well-maintained cars shipped anywhere in the world for Bitcoin. Head on over to their website or give them a call and buy a car from the first Bitcoin auto dealership. If you're in the market for um, a car right now, it would be really great uh, for you to just give them a call. NewAgeAutoSales.com. All right, let's go uh, back to Jacob. He's in Washington. He's doing some business there as a uh, in the marijuana business. And you were telling us that uh, there's been some good news, at least for the elections there, for the Libertarians, that you guys had eight candidates get through the primary. They didn't ultimately win, as Libertarians tend to not win uh, in most places outside of New Hampshire. Um, but uh, you know They don't really win in New Hampshire either. Well, they do. They just run as Republicans and Democrats <laughs> in New right. Hampshire, Mark. In fact, anarchists <laughs> run in uh, New Hampshire as Republicans and Democrats and win election. Uh, but you were saying that apparently in Washington, it's not this way in a lot of places— that they actually put the Libertarian on the primary ballot. Yes. Yeah. And um, we had pretty surprising uh, uh, results, you know, 33%, you know, things Is that like in that. The primary? You know, in the general, right? 33% the general. In, general. in the general. That's in, in a two-way race. Yeah. Right. Not and a particularly a good race. result. 33% in a two-way race isn't really anything to write home to mom about. We had that in Sarasota, Florida. No. Yeah. Right. And, and so basically... I think part of the biggest problem is is when we're delivering our message. Uh, I, I noticed the people would get, uh, you know, we'd get the kickback. Would be, oh, we'd be responsible for ourselves because they believe that other people are out to get them. And that earlier topic is exactly why I feel like the freedom movement has such a hard time, is because all the propaganda and we believe that people are innately you know, just out to harm us. Oh, if we didn't have any of these uh, uh, government oversights or mm. these restraints on people and, you know, disciplinary, you know, you know, judgment that that we'd all be in chaos. And and I, I just didn't like to hear that because I don't and I don't think human beings innately are that way. 
I think our biological. No, but it's certainly the government, government, the guys that are attracted to government behave in that way. I mean, we certainly right. well, that's know the, that. That's Correct. the other side of that coin. Um, it's important to point out to anybody who's who yeah. sort of reveals that they believe that humans are bad and wrong. And remember, I never made that statement. I don't think uh, Comrade Klinkheimer made it either. No, I don't think he was accusing you of saying that. Um, I, I think that what we're saying here is is that. I believe people are ruled by their incentives. and uh, But if, if we had a world where people are generally bad, the last thing you'd want to do is create a monopoly over violence so that bad people would be – the worst people would be attracted to it, right? Right, right. And, and, and I, I believe that's what a lot of people think because you've got this constant – pounding of people are bad people look at what is happening all the time and i I feel like the message is lost when we're talking about you know peace and 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 freedom for everybody and you know you're you're you know these people that don't think within i mean we're already there our minds are already focused on the goal we already know that that you know our, our belief systems are set you know, and we can, most of us can agree besides, you know, whatever about abortion, little things. But I mean, for the most part, you know, when I was working with my fellow libertarians on, on all this stuff, it was, we agreed on a lot of fundamentals and, and a lot of them have to be put forth, I think, in my opinion, that, that we have to let the other people know that don't, that aren't exposed to what we are, that, that no, this isn't the case. Would you do it? I like no, no, where you're coming you from. I, I get. I think I understand what you where you're coming from, uh, and that is that you know people do believe a lot of people do believe that that people are inherently bad. They they're given this message in uh, you know newscasts. Yeah. Newscast makes the world out to be a bad place. Uh, the government definitely has an interest in having people believe this, right? Because if the government, if people believed commonly that everyone's good and that people by nature are good, and you have to do no the reason right for thing, a government, right? Then then the government wouldn't seem as necessary. But if the government has you to believe yeah. that if it weren't for the thin blue line protecting you from the evils of the world and there would be chaos everywhere that your next door neighbor at least one of them would want to kill you and he would come over and uh, and destroy your family and set your house on fire if he only knew that the police weren't around i mean this is really what uh, the government wants people to be in fear they want people to fear one another they want them to fear the other interest group as well because they're constantly you know different interest groups that are fighting over control of the state and so i think you're absolutely right and that is part Part of what we're doing as liberty-minded folks is trying to spread the idea that, you know, if people are actually evil, that you don't want to have a government around so evil people can have power well, over other people. It, government's not but, the issue here. It's a monop- It's a, It's an organization that claims a monopoly on violence. Yeah, you don't and, want to have that around evil people. But if there are good people, if people are good by nature, then we don't need the state. But I'm still curious, right. how did the libertarians get through the primary? I mean, it, were these races in the primary that only had two candidates, or were there three candidates, a Republican, Democrat, and Libertarian, and the Libertarian actually got through? How did that work? Yeah, there was there were several there were several races were pretty you know I mean I know that the final outcome wasn't that awesome but yeah also I got to remember thirty thirty percent of the voting population didn't that was it that showed up in our state I don't know if that was nationwide too but that specifically our state only thirty percent showed up but what so, about the primary that, Are, you're saying there were three way primaries did libertarians yeah. beat Democrats yeah. or Republicans in the primary and tell us yes. about that yes. Well, uh, one of them, yeah, he's a friend of mine. He, uh, Michael Scott, he he made it through, and and it was awesome. We were pretty who was he up against? That. Who was he against in the primary? He, he was up against a, a Democrat and a Republican, yeah. and he made it through. How yeah. close? Like, what was who the beat? What were the results? Uh, you know, I don't have the numbers on me. I'm not even at my office. I, I had how to drive. How did he do it? I mean, how many people voted in this primary? Thirty uh, percent across the state. We don't in know the primary, the primary? Numbers right now. Uh, I believe so. I think all over. Period. Just that seems unusual. I'm, to vote. Yeah, that General. seems really unusual okay. to me. That that's okay. so you don't have your numbers in front of you, and that's fine. Yeah. Um, I would really love to I'm hear sorry. when you get the numbers in front of you, because I'm much more interested in the primary race where this libertarian managed to get into the general, where right. there's a where there's yeah. a, it's a two party race, and uh, because in the these two party states, these states where it's just two 
the two top getting candidates uh, managed to go on. Right. Um, it can be two Republicans. It could be two Democrats. It can be, you know, one Republican, right. one Democrat, whatever it is. And I'm very fascinated that a libertarian managed to move past uh, eight of them, it, apparently beat, it, you know, basically came in second and um, and then mm-hmm. failed. That doesn't happen yeah. too often. Yeah. So, yeah. Fascinating <laughs> stuff. That's Jacob. why we're proud. Yeah, that's that's kind of why yep. we're proud. You're you know, number one color. loser in this one. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're woo party. <laughs> hey, Jacob, thanks, man, and Sorry, good guys. luck with your business down there. I appreciate the call tonight. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Maybe people feel in the primary that they're not voting for the lesser that it's not as important to vote for the lesser of two evils. I don't know. I don't know what the motivation would be there. How a libertarian could make it through a primary like that? I'm. I'm pretty surprised about I'm that. I'm surprised, too. I want to hear more. All right. So there you go. Toll-free numbers. Maybe it was name recognition. He had a pretty generic but name. There were eight of them. Oh, yeah. He said there were eight races. No, that's not to say not that all, all of eight. Of, that's not to say all eight were three-way races in the primary. That wasn't made very, very I clear. I think not. Yeah. So I'd like to look into that a little bit further. Uh, not that I'm planning to move to Washington. Just more of a curiosity. It's nice to hear about libertarians winning here and there, even if it's just a primary. Our toll-free number is 855. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm interested in any place where there's su- any kind of success going on. Of and course, you can grow weed there. This is true. And sell it, apparently. 855 450 free with the government permission slip. 855-450-3733. Coming up, more uh, or details on what's happening in Ferguson. It's Free Talk Live. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs... Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Hey everyone, my Ghost 80% AR-15 project was a total success. Thank you, Guns80.com. Thank you. I bought my Ghost AR-15 at Guns80.com. It's everything I expected more. Just got a note from my buddy Mark, and now they're having a huge Black Friday and a big Cyber Monday sale. Guess Christmas is coming early this year. I'm definitely ordering one for my brother on Black Friday because the price drops to 400 bucks. Yes, I did just say that. 400 bucks. Un- Believable. At guns80.com, the big sale is on. Begins Friday, November 22nd, and ends December 1st. So hurry now. Sale prices for Ghost ARs again, 400 bucks. Black Friday will be a good day. Get your Ghost AR-15 at guns80.com. Sale is on right now at guns80.com. That's guns80.com. Guns and the number 8080.com. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas to everyone from our good friends at guns80.com. The big sale is on. I'll see you there. You can't win if you don't enter, and you actually can improve your chances of winning a prize drawing if you wrinkle up your entry blank. I'm Holland Cook from survivalspeech.com, and I speak from experience. Why this works? If they'll be spinning the drum before drawing, your entry blank will move around more than, and not adhere to, other perfectly flat entry blanks. And if they don't spin the drum and merely reach into a box full of other perfectly flat entry blanks, many of which are sticking together, yours will feel different to the person reaching in. When you win, act surprised. And if you're looking for work, this is a metaphor. For more tips on sticking out in a world where just too much blends into the blah, 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 hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. 
Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Lil Drums. Every bit as fun as a full-size Nestle drumstick cone and definitely cuter. Visit us at drumstick.com. Vacations are all about family time, but you don't have to leave home to have fun. Take one weekend a month and devote it to family activities. Pull out the board games and puzzles, serve up some treats, or have a picnic. Even without leaving home, you'll feel like you've really had some time away. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You're invited to take control of the airwaves right here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Ferguson, there is a uh, the decision expected after 9 p.m. Eastern time. We will let you know that when we find out. You can predict probably what it's going to be, but we'll find out more over time here. And uh, you can join us on the air. Tell your uh, Share your thoughts, especially if you're in Ferguson and you're a Free Talk Live listener tonight because i know a number of activists have gone there specifically for this uh so you know if you're on the ground we'd love to hear from you toll free 855 450 free ian derek jay and mark in the studio here tonight don't forget if you support free talk live please become a free talk live amplifier it's five bucks a month that's money that we take in and invest into the show it does not go to paychecks it doesn't go to subsidize somebody's living uh situation it goes to Free Talk Live, marketing the program, expanding Free Talk Live's coverage to more radio stations, more internet listeners through internet advertising like Google AdWords. Also, uh, we you know if we had enough money, we can buy more satellite uh, coverage around the world as well. Yeah. So, and I think this is important because the issue has come up yet again mm-hmm. um, that the AMP program is not a uh, reward system for Ian or I saying the things that you like us to say. The AMP program isn't your little vote of confidence that you like, Ian, because who does? Um, (laughs) There's a handful of people. Yeah, certainly. Or your little vote of confidence that you like me because, you know, I'm a little prickly. That's not what the AMP program is. The AMP program is your belief. This is that way I see it. You can, you, if you want to give uh, Free Talk Live a certain amount of money because you listen to the podcast or the radio program or, and you want to support us because you use the product, I suppose that's fine. Mm-hmm. That's not the way I look at the AMP program. I look at the AMP program as a, uh, as a, um, it's, it's a marketing tool for the ideas of liberty. If you think that Free Talk Live for $5 a month, which is a pretty small commitment when it comes to donations in the sphere of organizations that ask you for money for, uh, you know, to, to promote liberty, that if you think that we're good or maybe even the best at spreading the ideas of liberty, because I tend to think that we, you know, dollar for dollar can use AMP dollars more effectively than any organization that takes donations. More effectively than the Ron Paul campaign, I would say. Well, I think the Ron Paul Ron Paul has shown himself over the course of decades to be a really great proponent for the ideas of liberty. Mm-hmm. The question you'd have to have at that point is, what does he do with the dollars? Like, I gave money that went um, to the campaign in 2008. It got wrapped into the campaign for liberty. What was the campaign for liberty when it wasn't running, you know, wasn't promoting somebody whose last name was Paul? I'm not entirely sure. Hmm. Um, So, I mean, I don't know where your money goes in those circumstances. But I can tell you that every single dollar when, with the AMP program, goes to something good. What is the what is it per click for our Google AdWords? 
Uh, what? It's about thirty cents. About thirty. Cents. You get about so three clicks per dollar for your uh, fifteen uh, for your five dollar uh, donation per month. We get fifteen people who are hearing yep. free talk live that may have never heard it before. These, in many cases, these AdWords campaigns are not just libertarians looking looking for a podcast because. You know, we kind of, you know, we don't need to promote that as much. We're looking for people who have not heard the message before. And that's what you're reaching is, you know, Jim, you know, Joe Beer Can, who has never heard the ideas of liberty before, having them presented in a way that he or she finds, Joe or Josephine, uh, finds uh, palatable. And that's what we do with your money. Well, I don't know if I would uh, call our listeners Joe Beer Can, Mark. Uh, it's kind of a, it seems a little insulting. No, I think um, that we. But do you do not I don't know think if somebody's going to want to listen to what you've had to say after you've just called them Joe Beer Can? I think that the I'm talking about the average individual. Gotcha. Why am I not Joe Beer Can? Maybe you are. Uh, so anyway, you can go to amp.freetalklive.com. I don't drink beer because it upsets my stomach. I mm. generally drink wine, Aww. but <laughs> but I don't pay. I won't pay too much. <laughs> uh, so yeah, but so it's not about what you're saying though, Mark. It's not about an endorsement of everything we say because we say different things. And then, of course, we've got Derek J. and other people on the show. He says things, too. They say other things that aren't necessarily the exact same things that uh, we said. We've had some disagreements on the air here tonight. So yeah, you, I disagree. If you like what we're doing overall of introducing people to the ideas of freedom, then please get behind the show because there really isn't much else out there that you can get behind that's doing the same thing that uh, that we are. Nope. Not really. Uh, so you can you can support the Freedom Fiends too, but they're, they're you know they're not on quite as many radio stations as Free Talk Live. Uh, they're also a great show. I like them. Uh, in fact, Derek J is on the Freedom Fiends, as a matter of fact. Yes, I am. Uh, but go to amp.freetalklive.com. At five bucks, you can afford to support another show. Five bucks a month. I mean, is it? Uh, are you getting that level of entertainment out of Free Talk Live on a monthly basis? And how many you know recruits? How many new liberty loving people? Would it be worth to pay $5 a month for? We're getting an uncounted number. We don't know because we don't know how many people we can possibly reach. But we do know that we're on over 150 radio transmitters at various different times throughout the week right now, uh, you know, currently. But uh, we could be on 300. We could be on 400. We could have uh, far more people listening to the podcast. It all, it's really it takes all, money. all about the money. It does and take money. Th- you know, that's that's all it is. Point of fact, in the AMP program at the moment, uh, that the, I was actually looking at my budget for AMP, kind of looking, you know, where's this money going? Uh, and we're right now actually a couple hundred dollars behind what I'm spending. So I'm actually spending a couple hundred dollars a month of my own money to Ooh. sort of shore up the, uh, the AMP fund. Uh, so, you know, I'm actually overspending on AMP. AMP at the moment because, well, to me, it's this is an important task that we're doing here on Free Talk Live. So go and check it out, amp.freetalklive.com. You get perks. There's the AMP-only Facebook group, AMP-only phone lines, AMP-only podcast, uh, and all the details are over at amp.freetalklive.com. So our toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. Derek J., have we found a good cop? Maybe. Because we've talked a lot about the idea that there are no good cops because the truly good cops would actually go ahead and arrest the uh, cops that are the bad cops in their department. They would out them. They would, you know, do some investigating of the cops and start making arrests because we know there are corrupt cops all over the place. Did you find one? I can't quite figure this guy out. I'm not quite yet ready to call him a, quote, good cop because there's a bit of a twist to this story. But Let's see what you think. I think this harkens back to our conversation earlier in the show. I do not believe that there are good cops or bad cops. I believe that there are people that respond to incentives. Mm -hmm. And I think the incentives, when you have a monopoly over security in a given landmass, tend to pervert the goals that people have when they lay out money for a police department. A border town east of San Diego fired their own police chief last month, quote, in the interest of their own citizens. And on October 13th, that's just about a month ago, former police chief Pompeo Tabarez was replaced with Mike Bostic. Okay, so here we've got a town where a police chief has just been replaced about a month ago. This comes to us from the freethoughtproject.com. Great site. When Bostic took over the department, he found it rife with corruption. Mm. Quote, The city council members, in conjunction with the Police Officers Association and members of that association, have used city funds and city resources to run what I would call an extortion racket. Hmm. That, 
the words from the newly appointed police chief as he publicly accused his predecessor, members of his own department, and city officials. The ones that hired him. <laughs> of illegally trying to undermine a criminal investigation, huh. comparing their actions to those of the New York Mafia. Quote, All right. All right. Ex- I'm liking this guy so far. Exactly like the mafioso in New York, he said. That's exactly how they were operating. According to NBC San Diego, after he was on the job three or four days, Bostic discovered the investigations unit was not working on any cases. <laughs> the same was true of the narcotics and internal affairs unit. Wow. Okay. He was unable to find any reports on an alleged kidnapping and assault of a juvenile that took place in October. Quote, That's not too long ago. The former chief and his investigative unit were so busy trying to save his career and his job, rather than focus on the investigation, they completely botched it. Bostic immediately placed several officers on paid leave and demoted others. Now, I, I give that little bit of a tone because it's bittersweet to hear that they got paid leave. Yeah. I don't well, like to hear that. That's all he can do, right? I guess so. There's some pretty serious allegations here for him to just be like, here, take a paycheck. Don't come in. Is he could a arrest bit them, I soft. suppose. Yeah, I think that's soft. Bostic said that he even witnessed detectives using professional burglary tools <laughs> that no officer should carry to break into cars. Oh, my. Quote, There's a thing called search warrants in the state of California, he said. These were clearly tools for violating people's rights, and we're trying to get to the bottom of that. The corruption was so out of hand that the FBI has launched an investigation into the allegations. There's more to the story. We'll come back uh, with that. Coming up here and the latest on Ferguson, Missouri. As we learn it, maybe if you'll maybe you'll learn it first, you can call in toll free eight fifty five four fifty three. Be the first one on the beat to catch the story. Yeah, absolutely eight five five four five zero three seven three three. More about this supposed good cop. What's this guy's deal? What's his motivation? Is this just all political? It's very confusing. I like what I'm hearing so far, though. It's free talk live. More coming up. You've heard of Black Friday doorbuster deals. Well, don't miss Lumber Liquidator's Floor Buster deals. Get incredible discounts on your favorite floors at one-time only prices. There's never been a better time to get a great deal on pre-finished hardwoods, hand-scraped hardwoods, gorgeous bamboo, top-quality laminates, and get 26 months special financing. Plus, get even more Floor Buster discounts in our stores. The sale ends Tuesday. These deals will not wait until after the holidays. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Do you drink coffee? Was the last cup of coffee you had really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Get a free pound to try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. Help others one cup at a time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, November 24th, 2014. Silver is trading at $16.45 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,199 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $375. 
Antiwar.com reports the Afghan parliament on Sunday finally approved the troops deal which will keep U.S. occupation forces on the ground through 2024 and beyond. The vote was 152 to 5 and loudly backed by President Ashraf Ghani. The plan was to keep the troops there purely in a training and advisory role, which was the official U.S. policy at the time. It also made several very specific limits on things U.S. troops could not do inside Afghanistan. Undiscussed in the Afghanistan parliament was the fact that the Obama administration openly plans to violate that pact on multiple fronts now and has the apparent blessing of Ghani elected earlier this year in a fraud-laden runoff vote. On Friday, it was revealed that President Obama has already signed a secret order that would ignore the training and advisory limit and ensure that U.S. ground troops remain in direct combat through at least 2015, the first year of the deal. Reports are now that Ghani has quietly agreed to lift another of the limitations, the ban on night raids against civilian homes in Afghanistan beginning next year. Night raids were hugely unpopular in rural Afghanistan, both because of the hostility towards occupation forces breaking down people's doors in the middle of the night and because of major civilian casualties in some of the incidents. This threatens to be even more unpopular than extending the U.S. combat roles inside of Afghanistan and that the facts did not emerge until after Parliament already rubber-stamped the troop deal suggests an effort to keep important facts out of the vote. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Reuters reports Tunisians voted on Sunday to pick their first directly elected president, with the two major parties expecting a runoff as the final step in the North African state's transition to full democracy following a 2011 revolution that ousted longtime ruler Ben Ali. Official results were yet to be announced, but shortly after the polls closed, the parties of the two frontrunners said initial tallies showed they had passed to a second round runoff next month. Political parties had observers at polling stations who act as witnesses to oversee preliminary counts, which allow them to tally results unofficially for their party. More than three years since overthrowing Ben Ali's one-party rule, Tunisia adopted a new constitution and rival secularist and Islamist parties have largely avoided the turmoil that had plagued other Arab states swept by popular revolts. Tunisia's new government is already facing tough choices, with international lenders demanding difficult reforms in public spending to boost growth and create jobs. Tunisia was the first to topple its long-standing ruler, giving birth to the Arab Spring revolts that followed in Libya, Egypt, Yemen, and the war in Syria. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports, during an appearance on CNN, Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina flatly refused to accept the conclusion of a GOP-led report clearing the Obama administration of wrongdoing or cover-up in the 2012 Benghazi attack. Senator Graham told Gloria Borger, host of CNN's State of the Union, I think the report is full of crap. Later in the interview, he called conclusions reached by the report a bunch of garbage. He said he doesn't believe the report is accurate. Following a two-year investigation, the GOP-controlled House Intelligence Committee cleared the CIA of any failures in the 2012 attack on the American embassy in Benghazi that killed U.S. Ambassador Christopher Stevens and three other Americans. The report concluded the CIA ensured sufficient security for CIA facilities in Benghazi and bravely assisted the State Department. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com.
Captain Actual America is overweight and hopelessly in debt. And the Richie Rich comic strip introduces a new, even gayer character. As if you needed another reason to remain in your isolated and socially degenerative cocoon, this is the Onion Week in Review, Comics Edition. Sources confirmed Tuesday that the comic book and sci-fi expo Comic-Con was once again marred by BullyCon, an increasingly popular event held in the same convention space. Now in its fifth year, BullyCon reportedly drew more than 125,000 tormentors from across the nation, all of whom were bent on beating up and torturing those attending the many comic book, television, and movie panels at Comic-Con. This got started, it was just a couple of friends who wanted to beat the shit out of some Joss Whedon fans, but now there are thousands of us ruining Walking Dead panels, taunting Harry Potter nerds, and really making some video gamers' lives completely miserable. I don't necessarily need to travel to San Diego to slap a copy of Spider-Man out of some pussy's hands, but something really special about coming together with people who dig the same sort of cruelty you do. This is Free Talk Live, and we're launching into the third hour of the program. Plenty of time for you with your calls and thoughts. You can just dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. The decision from the grand jury in Ferguson is expected this hour. Not sure how close to the top of the hour they will be uh, delivering that decision. From what I have seen, uh, no indictment. You are seeing Derek J is showing me uh, footage from USA Today. So that's no bill? Claiming no bill, no indictment. The jury says there's no reason to charge officer, I believe his name, Darren Wilson, and who I believe has now resigned, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, Officer Darren Wilson will not be charged, and so we will let you know if anything happens further uh, in Ferguson. There are a number of protesters who are in the streets. What do you think about that? That's not a surprise at all. I don't know what the situation is. I mean, I know that I talked to Chris Campbell about it last week, and he seems convinced that the uh, Michael Brown, the gentleman that was shot by the officer was a strong arm robber who put the officer in danger and the officer legitimately defended himself. For Chris Cantwell to say that about a police officer is a pretty, uh, you know, pretty strong statement to make considering his Chris Cantwell is certainly not friendly gen- in general towards police. Well, um, but I personally, you know, I haven't reviewed any sort of details on this situation. I don't take a stand on who's right and who's wrong. What do you think? One of the most convincing pieces of evidence was uh, the debris or the um, dust found from the gun on uh, Michael Brown's hand uh, and his thumb where he had an, uh, a wound from a gunshot in his hand. Okay. Um, he wasn't on the ground with his hands up if yeah, that's the case. If, if you're shot through your hand and you have residue on your hand, that says to me you are reaching for a gun. Mm-hmm. If you're reaching for a gun... You're a real deadly threat, um, you know, and and I don't I don't want to say justified or not, but it's like, hey, put yourself in in someone's shoes where you're holding a gun and someone who's bigger than you is reaching for mm-hmm. it. Yeah, I don't know the specifics of the case, and 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 I'm therefore can't make any I can't make any statement. There's no evidence, and that's the problem. There should be evidence. Why is there a video? Why is there any video? There should be video and there should be audio from a uh, you know a, a uniform cam? a uniform mounted camera on every police officer in the United States. This is 2014 and every American carries around most Americans carry around a camera in their pocket in the form of a smartphone or even some of the dumb phones have cameras from them and the idea that we have to just kind of wonder what happened is ridiculous. Yeah, it feels like we're in 1970 rather than, you know, 2004 or 14, I get that, you know, back in 1814, you couldn't get uh, video evidence of what uh, the sheriff was doing. Well, that's the thing. Uh, There was also some speculation previously that, well, maybe he did go for the cop's gun, but maybe that's because the cop was putting, you know, some sort of deathly level of force against him and he was trying to keep himself alive. Who knows? We don't know. That's just it. That's why I don't want to draw enough. I can't. I don't have enough information to draw a conclusion about this. Uh, I mean, I guess presumably the grand jury has that information. and They have uh, the information they have. They've made the decision they've, they've made. made yeah. Do I like the decision? I don't know because I can't make it. I can't make an informed decision. That's correct. You don't have enough information. There's, uh, there's people who believe one way. There's people who believe another way. I feel uh, I've, I'm heartbroken for people who feel like uh, this is, you know, that injustice has been has happened here. And certainly injustices occur in the world. But 
you know, you have to take everything case by case, and I don't know what happened. And will the protesters use this as an excuse to destroy private property, as had happened previously in another, Ferguson? Yet another injustice. Uh, yeah, and so, yeah, injustices piled on in, injustices. I mean, I just... I'm not a fan of the idea of rioting. I don't think that that's a good thing. And I especially am not a fan of rioting in the case of where you don't really know what the hell's going on. I mean, I understand that uh, that the idea is that this is a protest against police brutality and racism uh, in police departments. And I don't deny that there's racism inherent in a lot of police uh, that are out there in the United States. I just don't know if that was the case in this particular. The instance. change that I would like to see, and I think that it was, you know, that it's roundly agreed with, is that this is that turning point where uh, uniform-mounted cameras really can be pushed forward. This, you know, this is it. This is the solution to the problem. If the police officer acted uh, justly. A uniform-mounted camera would exonerate him. If a uh, if he in, in fact was a terrible yeah. person, a uniform-mounted camera would uh, would indict him. Well, I don't think but, this is a good cop. I just like to make it clear. I mean, there's another story I had a few days ago. We didn't get it on the air, but the, you know, where he's got there's video of this Darren Wilson guy harassing somebody with a video camera. So yeah, he's certainly not a good guy. There's no doubt about that. But yeah, but this could be a case of where there's no good guy in this that's story true. because a uh, little window into Michael Brown's world. A uh, news headline from a couple of weeks ago: Michael Brown's mother may face felony armed robbery charges. Oh dear. What? Yeah. Uh, she allegedly led a group of twenty to thirty people to a tent in a parking lot in Ferguson, Missouri, on October 18th to beat and rob vendors who were selling Justice for Michael Brown merchandise. So just a window into the world of where Michael Brown comes from. This is his violent mother reacting not a week after his death uh, in beating people up like a gang. Anyway, well, just that's, just a that's little somebody bit of reacting perspective in a world where um, you know, it's sort of we're all intellectual property is shoved down our throats um, all the time, right? And in this circumstance, what it looks like is is the people to her, people are making uh, money off of the death of her son, and I can totally see why that would be um, you know distasteful to her. But, you know, I mean, is, is that a good solution? I don't think so. If she really wanted to use, I mean, you know, she a better system likely would have been to, you know, get some kind of uh, IP case after these people. But it probably wouldn't have been worth it. They're just T-shirt vendors. This is Darren, or this is uh, Michael Brown's mother. So just, I, yeah, just an this is where he came from. This is where you were growing up. I mean, this is your mom growing up. What does that result in as far as personality of a, of a teenage, you know, was he 19 or something like that when he was shot? He was very young. His I mean, age, he was yeah. definitely a teen- he was definitely a late teenager. Yeah, they uh, had all kinds of stories. I think they were calling a college student early. <laughs> Toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty three. We're going to get into your calls and thoughts. But Derek J, in the last hour, you did tell us about a police chief who has uh, taken over a department in California, and he's revealing corruption within. He's putting officers on uh, you know, administrative leave. It's Calexico, California. And th- there doesn't seem to be too, too much to the story remaining, at least that I have. But was there something else you wanted to add to this? Just that uh, I think it's amazing that a chief would come forward and expose this sort of corruption, obviously at risk to himself, because sure. the people who put him into power could just as easily take him out. And if they are connected, like the New York Mafia, so as he said, he could end up dead. If that's true. <laughs> he could wear some cement shoes. So the the corruption was so out of hand, he sent it to the FBI. Last week during a press conference, this is how I heard about it, the Bostic publicly announced the corruption, and, and he's seen tearing up when he got to the part about having to call the FBI just two weeks into his term. He was moved to tears and said, quote, I've literally had it. So he he was just a broken man up in front of everyone. Just I, I can't imagine putting yourself in that position. But then I wonder, like what Mark was saying earlier about how everyone responds to incentives. So what are his incentives? What are his incentives? And is he just covering his own butt? Well, um, I 
the, did, the story is ri- written in a fashion where you're supposed to feel empathy towards this uh, good, just, uh, upstanding paladin that has been put into this corrupt um, mm-hmm. you know, police department, and he's in there to rout out the bad ones. And, you know, that's the idea. And yep. so I tend to feel that way because this is the way the information has been presented to me. However, if you look through human history, there are not a few examples of, not just a few examples, of, of people who have... You know, gained new newfound power, and to cement their power and their control, they disparage the last guy who was in sure in office. Yeah, and they clean house. And these people, you know, may or may they they may be better rulers, as it were, mm-hmm. but that doesn't make them good ones. And so, eh, you know, I mean, the, to me, this is just this is just well, politicking. It may just be politicking, and certainly that is a, a jaded way to look at the situation. And then it may be in com- in c- completely appropriate to look in a jaded fashion at this character and you know wonder what the real story is. Is it that he did inherit this corrupt department, but he didn't have his fingers into all of the corruption, and so therefore he's you know taking out the ones that he can't touch or that he or that he you know can't get into into bed with, uh, so to speak, or is he entering into this corrupt department that ultimately Ultimately, he knows it's just so corrupt that somebody's going to get popped and then he's going to go down. And so he just wants to do the be, be the one who takes them down. It's Free Talk Live. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now. Because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-856-4195. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-856-4195. That's 1-800-856-4195. Call 1-800-856-4195. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today is October 29th, 2014. Gold opened at 1223.40. A one-ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1268.34, 634.17 for a half ounce, or 317.09 for a quarter ounce. That's 1268.34, 634.17, and 317.09. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Which order you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. Excuse hey, me. hey, hey, hey. Who do you think you are? Excuse me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make it. Wait a minute. Now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared of me. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. 
If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial in toll free and take control of the airwaves. The number that you need is 855-450-FREE. As the decision has come in, according to USA Today, the grand jury in Ferguson will not be indicting Officer Darren Wilson regarding the killing of Michael Brown, who, of course, as you may recall, a few months ago sparked off uh, the protests and the riots, the destruction of property in Ferguson, Missouri. What will happen tonight in Ferguson? That has uh, that remains to be seen. I do have a live feed on Ustream going where there's a, a number of police officers lined up. They appear to be guarding their own facility uh, based on <laughs> the yeah, based on what appears on the side of the building. I think it is the police headquarters there in Ferguson. But again, I don't have much context beyond that. This it would is just be embarrassing if camera. the police headquarters got burned down. I well, guess there's nothing would. more important than officer safety. So, hey, you know what's what, what is important is keeping your wealth safe from the ravages of inflation. And gold and silver can help you do that. Mark, where could one get gold and silver? It's easy. Go to gold.freetalklive.com. We've teamed up with Midas Resources. They're the parent company of our syndicate, Genesis Communications Network. I've done business with them for many years and always gotten fabulous service from them. You can get gold or silver. Right now, I'm looking at silver, but you may think that gold's in better position. But um, it, it's a great idea. It's a great hedge against inflation. You may think it's a good uh, investment. I'm telling you what I think that it's a good investment right now, but you know, you're going to have to make your decision up on, on your own. Um, and some people want to have metals for bartering if uh, things go really poorly uh, with the economy. So. It's gold.freetalklive.com. Let's bring David on the line. He's in San Francisco. David, you're on with Ian, Derek, Jay, and Mark. Hey, greetings, all. You know, it's uh, it's interesting. Um, I uh, was looking at Wikipedia on this, uh, what do you call it, the uh, Michael Brown shooting incident. And if you look at this is the Wikipedia, and then, you know, at the bottom they have all the attribution for all of the different stories. So if you look at number 54, that is a story by uh, Lawrence, uh, was it Lawrence O'Donnell, and uh, Lawrence O'Donnell is claiming in August that the cop had not filed a police an incident report because his lawyer was telling him not to. So basically, the cop was pleading the fifth. You know, by filing a police an incident report, he's uh, basically confessing to what he did, right? And so that's one of the reasons why they give cops immunity is because uh, they have to fill out these various reports. And so the idea that he still has not filed a, an incident report and the grand jury dragged on for months, I mean months. You know, this happened in August, and these guys have milked it for all it's worth. You know, you imagine uh, one bad cop, uh, you know, a round of bullets, and millions of dollars have been wasted on arms and media time and, uh, you know, arrests and all sorts of different things. Imagine the insurance companies in St. Louis that are jacking up their rates just, 
you know, slathering at the at the uh, thought that they can jack up the interest rates on or the premiums on people's insurance, uh, you know, in St. Louis because uh, of all of this fear mongering that they've been doing. All can an insurance of, company just arbitrarily jack up your rates like that? I mean. I well, don't. I don't read the contracts. There so. are these government agencies that uh, tell insurance companies what they can and, and can't do. But you know, I'd suspect they probably could to some extent if if, if the uh, if the news is thick enough. Oh yeah, absolutely. And as a matter of fact, you remember uh, after nine eleven, uh, when the first stories about the um, uh, uh, there was there was a uh, uh, good grief. It was uh, that there were going to be uh, terrorists were going to bomb apartment buildings. You know, as vague as that is, every apartment building all across America uh, was uh, probably subject to higher insurance rates. And so, and it turned out that that was a totally... How is that? I'm sorry. I just, look, I'm no expert on insurance. Um, How is it exactly that you could pay a company for coverage and then, I mean, I've never heard of like, for instance, insurance companies jacking up rates when the hurricane comes nearby. I mean, that just doesn't make sense. I don't they see, do jack I don't see the rates would, after the hurricane comes by. I don't think people would stand for that. Well, that's how they can drag it on for months. You know, they might not, if this shooting happened in August and it drags on into September, it drags on into October, slowly but surely, uh, you know, it's not everybody gets hit with it at once. I see what you're saying. So at, when renewal time comes around, sure. they could certainly increase the rates at renewal time. I thought you were saying they're just going to jack up the rates, you know, in the middle of a contract, which just doesn't make much sense. I suppose it could be in the contract they could do that, but I don't think that would be very popular as far as... Sounds like you're suggesting there's some conspiracy, David, by the insurance companies to prolong this jury well, deliberation you think that, so that uh, they can jack up the prices. Big business and government might... Well, to conspire? You know, I think that sounds I, like baloney. I, yeah, it's ridiculous. No, I mean, the, look, the government forces. takes forever to do things. That's what it is. It's not that they're working this with the insurance forces. companies. No, this it's not. Never attribute to, to malice what you can attribute to ignorance. This is not market forces. The insurance company is not a uh, free market organization. There's If there's any kind of price fixing going on, they're doing it with the blessing of the state. Uh, no, I wouldn't say that, because out here in California, uh, we had, uh, you, you know who Ariana Huffington is, right? Yeah. yeah. Her, husband used, is, her husband used to be Michael Huffington. She's divorced him since. Michael Huffington used to be the insurance commissioner for California, and he uh, got indicted for uh, price, uh, for insurance fraud. He was, he was allowing various insurance companies to fraudulently, there were all sorts of different uh, insurance frauds that he was doing. Uh, yeah, he, he was working for the government, the right? Run, right? He, he was he allowing insurance run. companies to screw people, so he's using his power as a government agent to assist those insurance companies. A true market would allow anybody to enter the insurance field, and I can tell you that at least where I live, there are very few options. I mean, you look at health insurance, you barely have anything out there because they're tied in with the government. I thank you, David, for the call. Toll-free number is 855 450 free. Yeah, I had one thing that I didn't get to really ask David. Something Sorry that about he that. Ins- that's okay. He insinuated at the beginning that because Darren Wilson, the cop in this situation, didn't write a police report, that essentially he was pleading the fifth, and that means he's guilty. Well, I have a real problem with that leap in logic yeah, to say sure. that because someone's silent, therefore they're guilty. Yeah. I mean, that's why there is the Fifth Amendment. That's why people are supposed to—I mean— you're not supposed to have to incriminate yourself. Sure, guilty people could remain silent and therefore protect themselves, but it could also be an innocent person who doesn't want to entangle themselves in the legal system. I think it's smart not to uh, get yourself, uh, you know, to make to make some statement that you that that maybe, uh, you know, ignite some kind of bigger issue before you speak to an attorney. Now, what do you think about that in the context of a police report, though? Do you think a police uh, officer should be obligated to write a police report every time, or does he also have the right to remain silent? That's an excellent question. I would say that it uh, should be his he's, obligation. Yeah, I, I, I think he should be. Uh, since he's paid, I suppose he should have to. Uh, to his job. Have to do I don't his know. Job. I might. I might side saying, look, if we all want the same rules to apply to everyone equally, and we want that world today, then we should just, uh, you know, hold people accountable the same way we would. Uh, any other individual. We'll come back with more. And if you've got d- details on what's happening in Ferguson, I'm sure there's more than one live feed. I've only got one pulled up in front of me at the moment. 
Uh, so if you've got some uh, some info, feel free to let us know. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We'll give you a rundown of some of the protests happening. It's Free Talk Live. Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. This holiday season, give the gift that keeps on giving, an in-home freeze dryer from Harvest Right. With your very own freeze dryer, you'll be able to freeze dry the food your family loves. Because we live in uncertain, difficult times, what better way to show your love for your family than to buy them a gift that helps them preserve food they can use now or in 25 years. Go to HarvestRight.com and find out how you can get your in-home freeze dryer. Layaway is available. That's HarvestRight.com. Free Talk Live. We're talking about piracy. The Barbary pirates were attacking um, American merchant ships and taking the sailors into slavery. Yep. Um, which right. is a little worse than conscribing them like England was. England was just making them, you know, do a little bit of work. I mean, it's certainly the slavery, but to a much lesser extent. <laughs> um, when, Did they get the doubloons? That's what I want. When, the, <laughs> when somebody from the Sudan takes you into slavery, uh-huh. you're in slavery. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's slavery in its uh, raw sense. Mm-hmm. So he sent over the Navy in order, um, was it? Well, that's the risk you take Aren't on you? the high seas. Trying to think, uh, this this famous uh, American pirate that I can't remember his name offhand. Blackbeard. Now, now. Redbeard. <laughs> no. Goldbeard. <laughs> <laughs> Maroon beard. <laughs> Free talk live seven nights a week from seven to ten Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Who did you let down today? Your wife? Your kids? Well, how about yourself? Take a look in the mirror. If you're tired of your drug and alcohol problem, you need to fix the problem and right now before you hurt or kill yourself or worse yet, somebody else. Call the addiction specialist now at the Detox and Treatment Helpline 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you have private insurance, we specialize in finding you the right treatment. When you call right now, you'll speak to a recovering addict who understands what you're going through right now. Let us help you break your addiction to drug and alcohol before it's too late. This call is completely confidential and free. So if you have private insurance, take five minutes of your time. Call right now. I promise it'll change your life. 800-208-5187. 800-208-5187. 800-208-5187. Call right now. 800-208-5187. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free and bring up anything. 855-450-FREE. We've got Skype. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm with you in studio ian here derek j and mark check out more of derek j at derekj.me and don't forget antiwar.com yeah is it an isis crisis or just more hype antiwar.com has the answers antiwar.com has the facts 
Antiwar.com has the readership. What Antiwar.com doesn't have is a pot of gold. The war machine has the magic of the Federal Reserve's printing press and the mainstream media. All Antiwar.com has is you. The Antiwar.com staff is down to a skeleton crew with minimal pay. They're committed to keeping the website up with the best of the worst of all the bad news. But they can't do it for free, and they can't do it without you. They need your donation. Please go to antiwar.com and donate or call them today. They proudly and gladly take Bitcoin. Antiwar.com slash donate because war is the health of the state. Now, this was posted earlier by Reuters, but it's the freshest uh, that I have found thus far about what has been happening in Ferguson tonight from Reuters. So this was published before the decision. Uh, according to the video feed that I'm looking at here, uh, there are a number of armed police. There are now more of them than previously than I was looking at it about 10 minutes ago. Uh, armed police are now standing with body armor and uh, shields out in front of the Ferguson Police Department and courthouse. I got a good look at the sign on the building, and both of those things are housed in the same facility. That is where the police are and a line of protesters as well. I'm not sure as to the exact numbers, the the feed is fairly intermittent at best. Uh, and so there, you, you get a little bit of video, and then it pauses for quite a while, and then maybe you'll get a little bit more video. So that one is linked over on the Drudge Report. Again, I'm sure there are better videos out there. If you want to link them on our Facebook page, then uh, I'll put the one up to this video. And if you've got better ones, you can link yours underneath that. If you're on the ground in Ferguson, would love to hear from you. The toll-free number is 855 855- 450 free. Derek J, there were some libertarian types who were encouraging people to go down to Ferguson. What do you think about that approach? Well, I think it's a horrible idea. And in any riot situation, I advise everyone to go home, do like I did, make brownies and hand them out <laughs> to your friends. That happened uh, when there was a riot here in Keene. I lived by example and went home and made brownies. I think that's the right thing to do. Uh, stay calm, be polite, don't join a riot. Well, I didn't go down to join the riot personally, yeah. but I did go down to video record what was happening. And Courageous, no not advisable. Though. There's no doubt. I definitely put myself at some risk uh, doing that. Yeah. Luckily, I wasn't shot by the police uh, while I was down there. But uh, they You did- also gave the footage that you got of uh, criminal behavior over to the police. Right. That's true. I did go. I did go directly into a riot in that particular case. Uh, with, with the second time I went down, it was nighttime. That's when the helicopter was flying around. Issuing I just its find message. it interesting that free keeners are blamed for the riots, and here you were, uh, you know, trying to help apprehend people who committed property crimes. Doing one of the only helpful things that was happening that day at That's that true. time. <laughs> It's true. So, uh, so again, I'll post this particular feed on our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. You can access all of those by going to news.freetalklive.com. And, again, if you've got a better feed, please post that up because I'd, be, I'd like to see what's, uh, what's going on there. We can't, res- we can't rely on the news media, the mainstream news media, to give us the real story. So I have to say also, in, in fairness, while I say, yeah, go home, don't go out into the streets – I support activists like uh, Jacob Crawford of We Cop Watch who donated a 100 video cameras to the, the people of Ferguson so that they that. can record the police around them. Didn't you have him on Cop Block Radio? Yeah, we got to talk with him and a few other activists, one of them, David, who was just arrested today Whoa. Uh, down at Ferguson. So we'll, we'll learn more about that story. Well, it was some baloney charge. like For uh, recording the police? It was recording the police on the sidewalk, but what they oh, said, man. it was like a disorderly conduct or one of those catch-all charges. Honking horns and banging a metal bucket, a small but growing group of protesters awaited Monday's grand jury decision, swarming the Ferguson Police Department and meeting briefly with the father of slain black teen Michael Brown. Mike Brown Sr., whose unarmed son was killed by a white police officer on August 9th, this is a Reuters story, slowed down in a car to chat with demonstrators after hearing the secret panel had reached a decision on whether to indict Officer Darren Wilson. And as we found out, that decision is that they will not be indicting him. Protester Brian, or Byron rather, Conley, father of a teen son, said he spoke with Brown about the pain of losing a child and spending a holiday like Thanksgiving without your son. I could tell. It's got to be tough. I could tell what he's going through, he said. And in New York, civil rights activist Al Sharpton called a 915 press conference in Harlem saying he would join the Brown family in Ferguson on Tuesday to again address the media. Tensions have been mounting. Now, why anyone cares what Al Sharpton uh, is doing here, I, I don't know. 
Uh, tensions have been mounting over the highly anticipated decision, which officials fear could touch off a repeat of last summer's violence and property destruction in the predominantly black suburb of, of 21,000 people at a makeshift memorial on a street where Brown was killed, the street where he was killed. A, people, a handful of people gathered Monday night, some wearing masks in the cold evening where temperatures were predicted to dip to 26 degrees Fahrenheit. We are ready for war. We're ready for war. Jeez. We will not let this sleep said a man wearing I am Michael Brown hoodie sweatshirt who identified himself only as D. White, aged 30, said he lived nearby. You should tie a little tag on his toe for uh, identification later. Protests, largely nonviolent, have been held regularly in the community with some evidence of self-policing. In recent days, when a protester threw a water bottle or otherwise acted aggressively, the rest of the crowd screamed, agitator, agitator, and pointed the person out to police. I hope we can do this in a peaceful way. I just don't want to, I just don't want Owen to look at our little town thinking we're a bunch of wild animals. We're really good people here, said Conley, age 51, a black resident who works for a medical supply company. He says, quote, I'm not on Mike Brown's side, and I'm not on Darren Wilson's side. I'm here for the residents, and we just want our town back. I hear him. A small but growing group of 20 protesters, mostly young men, bundled against the chill in the winter cl in winter clothing, their faces covered by bandanas, reminiscent of the ones worn last summer to shield against tear gas, banged a large metal wash bucket outside of police headquarters. They broke sporadically to toss around a football near a parked car covered with painted exhortations, including honk, the number four Mike. So that was the situation earlier tonight. That story came out about two hours ago. Uh, we're waiting for any further news of anything happening in Ferguson. As I said, the feed that I have just keeps showing the same black-clad police. Looks like the crowd's fairly large. I just got my first look at the crowd there outside of the Ferguson Police Department and uh, the courthouse, and I would say there are hundreds of people present just based on the brief footage that I have seen, maybe you know more than a few hundred people. Uh, so it looks like quite a situation, whether or not there's any violence or anything that's actually going down, we haven't heard. If you're on the ground, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, it looks very scary seeing uh, all of those people out there. That's I'd, not scary. I think that's scary. Because why are they there? What are they, they want action. I wish they would go home. I don't like that. Well, I can understand why people are, are upset. There's a lot of emotion that comes to the forefront here. It's not necessarily that, you know, it's... I'm sure the people in the crowd, some of them have very strong opinions about which way they want the decision to go. But on the other hand, there may just be people who are there because they have concerns with the police in general and that uh, they see this as an opportunity to protest. I don't know. Nothing good out on the streets. I would think uh, if I were there, I would want bright lights to illuminate the streets so that it was as bright as day. Because often when there's uh, light on a situation, there's less crime that happens. So in related news, there's a story in St. Louis County. Police there are violating a court order by arresting a journalist for taking photos. This story from photographyisnotacrime.com. Yeah, I heard about this story. It took a little more than, and it's the same county, right? Is it St. Louis County? Is that the same yeah. one? Well, yeah, well, it's nearby. Uh, it took little more than a day for St. Louis police to violate a court order ruling that police are forbidden from restricting citizens to record in public after they arrested a journalist for doing just that on Saturday night. As Somebody didn't get the memo. Tensions continue to mount in anticipation of Monday's grand jury decision. The fact that a judge needed to issue three court orders for three law enforcement agencies to enforce what the First Amendment already protects is an indicator of how heavy-handed police have been with protesters and journalists over the last three months since the police shooting death of an unarmed teenager. And the real takeaway from this story is that court decisions ultimately don't mean anything on the ground. The court issued this ruling. They probably sent out a memo to the department, but it doesn't stop the police from violating your rights. Over just time the judge will. says that. Uh, I appreciate your optimism, Mark. We're not really seeing that happen. Uh, there's more coming up here. You can take control at 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. 
Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. With autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. And it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season. Like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules, regularly $34.95, now only $25. HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95, now 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95, 60 capsules, now $10. Save on all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body, normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Specials button to save on all our natural cold and flu fighting products. Also explore our Herbal Healer Academy correspondence courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. I think I could, actually. This is Free Talk Live. Ferguson uh, continuing to develop here. I did monitor the live feed that we've been watching here in the studio during the break there, and the crowd sounds loud. There's definitely a lot of anger. Uh, there were a couple F-bombs dropped within about 10 seconds of me tuning into the feed. I would like to point out to all the FCC supporter types out there that, look, here's an instance where Free Talk Live yeah. and uh, news programs around the world, uh, where, around America, are unable to provide you with on-the-ground news because somebody might give an F-bomb. Now, that's a fleeting expletive. Yeah, I think there's an argument that uh, that live breaking news uh, should not be subject to I agree. Do things. you want to put your affiliates, uh, your dozens of affiliates that are listening tonight on the, the radio in jeopardy and have to give— I have before, actually. We've played a, a video of police saying the F-bomb before on Free Talk Live. It's okay when they do it. 
I've done it. Well, the reason why is because this is clearly a news, you know, this is a news clip and uh, this is reality. This is this is what is being reported on was how rude the police were being. And shouldn't we be able to report on that in a way that is honest to reality? I think the Ministry of Truth has something to say about that. What do you mean? You get, well, the Ministry of Truth is the uh, idea from 1984 that mm-hmm. there's this uh, department that goes out there and scans all the news and lets you, you know, you you can't know everything that's out there. You can't know direct reality. They're going to color it for you. So I think there's a strong argument for it. But, Mark, of course, as you're pointing out, if the FCC comes, they won't be coming for Free Talk Live. It's a chilling effect. They'll be coming for the radio station. So oh. even though we're the ones who would be originating that content, uh, in this case, the you live would be feed. far braver, I believe, if uh, if it wasn't for that fact. Huh. Well, we are not the license holder. Yeah. In this case, I wouldn't say that listening to a crowd shouting is worth putting on the air. It's not as important as the incident where we had the police behaving very poorly and cursing at a cameraman and cursing at a small child. I forget what the incident was, but it was pretty outrageous, and so I felt it should be provided. Uh, so anyway, toll-free number here tonight, 855-450-FREE. There's not really much else to say, at least at the moment, out of Ferguson, uh, but if you have something to add, you're welcome to join us here. Now, nearby to Ferguson, St. Louis County, a judge has issued three orders for three law enforcement agencies to remind them, hey, there's journalists around here. You guys aren't supposed to be arresting them for recording you in public. But yet, within uh, just about a day's time, they went ahead and violated that order. And according to... It's uh, arguable that they hadn't gotten the memo yet, right? Uh, no, no, I would not argue that. I would. I'm pretty sure that order went out, and uh, you know, I guess you could argue Government that- agencies are not known for their uh, you know, f- fast uh, ability to change. They are not mm-hmm. known for their efficiency. I suspect the order came down, and this police, these police officers, the people who are the boots on the ground, as it were, they hadn't heard the story yet. The fact that police blatantly ignore the court order is an indicator of how heavy-handed they might be in lieu of the grand jury decision that will determine whether or not Ferguson police officer Darren Wilson will be indicted. He has not been indicted. This was written uh, yesterday. St. Louis County Police said they arrested Trey Yinkst for failure to disperse. But countless witnesses say Yinkst was arrested for taking photos from a public sidewalk. According to Reason.com, a credentialed member of the media was arrested in Ferguson on Saturday night at around 11.40 p.m. The arrest appeared to violate a court order issued Friday prohibiting the police from arresting law-abiding journalists. Lieutenant Jerry Lohr of the St. Louis County Police Department later told myself and other members of the media that the journalist was arrested for failure to disperse from a street, despite the fact that I, as well as approximately 100 other protesters and media, clearly witnessed the arrest take place on the sidewalk. So, clearing the street, wait a minute, he was on the sidewalk. St. Louis County Police then tweeted from their official account... That Trey Yanks, a reporter from D.C., had been arrested for failure to disperse because, quote, he was asked to leave the street by the commander and refused, unquote. The tweet was met by a backlash of dozens of contradictory reports, photos, and videos from individuals on the scene who saw what I saw, a reporter being arrested for taking pictures on a public sidewalk. The court order was issued to the Ferguson Police Department, the St. Louis County Police Department, and Missouri Highway Patrol, the three agencies who've been overseeing the continuous protests since the shooting on August 9th. According to the National Press Photographers Association today, a federal judge granted three orders agreed to and consented to by those places, Missouri, Ferguson, uh, Highway Patrol, etc. The order signed by the judge for those... Uh, bureaucracies enjoins those entities from, quote, interfering with individuals who are f- photographing or recording at public places, but who are not threatening the safety of others or physically interfering with the ability of law enforcement to perform their duties. Yinkst was released about four hours after his arrest, according to a tweet he sent out early this morning. And prior to his arrest, Yinkst was in the process of sending out a tweet complimenting the police for their restraint. <laughs> Update to the story, Yinkst was one of several journalists and photographers who issued a declaration describing how police violated his constitutional right to document, which led up to the court orders, as you can see in the screenshot below, which you can see when I link to this on our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. Derek J., you're no stranger to recording the police. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now, Mark, you were talking about how you said that things get better over the years, and I think that's true where you have enough of a concerted effort. Uh, so, like here in Keene, New Hampshire, 
it's not a problem to walk relatively close to any police scene and openly record that. That is not a problem. You've never had an issue, I've never seen that be a problem. Yeah. Well, that's because we've been here for a decade now. Not you and I personally, but we, the activists, the liberty activists who've moved here as part of the Free State Project, we've been here for years. The police have gotten the memo by now. They've definitely gotten the memo, and they know how to behave. They know how to be respectful of the the cameras. Generally, there are exceptions. And there are actually uh, the other side of the exception where some officers will actually stage for the camera. So I remember when uh, Anarcho Jesse was being arrested for or was going to be arrested for the uh, outlaw guarding outlaw gardening incident that happened years ago when Lieutenant Shane Maxfield arrived on the scene. He actually allowed me to get my camera out and rolling before he approached so like he he kind of waited at his car while I got everything started and started walking in front of him. Wow! So, sort of to make things even more cinematic, I've had uh, the police assist in the video recording. That's kind extent. of cool, but yeah. also weird. <laughs> <laughs> Only in Keene, you know, because we've got the activists on the ground. Whereas if there's one guy who's arrested in Ferguson, now obviously Ferguson's going to have more than probably have more than one arrest over all these months. But if one guy's arrested in town X and the word goes out to the police, you can't do this anymore. And then the next incident happens a year later. It's not like it's happening often enough. It's not like people are out in the streets often enough to really acclimate the police to know what this is like, to understand videography and the the people that are there and be more respectful of them. I think that there's just not enough cop blockers out there. There's not enough cop watchers. There's not there's enough, not enough civics classes yeah. where these people went to high school, assuming uh, the police made it through it necessarily, and that you're taught that, oh, I don't know, the First Amendment, that there's a freedom of the press. This guy is a you know videographer on the street. At this point, anybody can have a blog. Anybody can be the press. There's most towns don't even have press credentials anymore. They're useless. So uh, that's uh, just all I wanted to share there. Yet another example of the police not following their own cho- the court orders. It happened to me. I was arrested in Palmer, Massachusetts for walking into town hall with a video camera. This was after the Glick decision, which came out in Boston, same state. Wasn't a small decision when that came out. It was a no, big, big was news a big item. And uh, I even cited the decision while I was being arrested. And you know, it didn't stop them. Ultimately, to, they lost. It happened to Carlos Miller right here in Keene of photographyisnotacrime.com. That's correct. He was correct. challenging one of the court bailiffs who threatened to arrest him for recording inside of a courthouse. You can see that happen in Derek J's movie, Victimless Crime Spree. You can go to victimlesscrimespree.com. Mark, gay jeans. We teased it at the very beginning of the show. Let's get it out there. There's uh, what sounds like big news. I gotta know. <laughs> well, I mean, the largest... we're not talking about skinny jeans or anything like that. We're talking about jeans of the biological sort. Right. These are jeans of people who are uh, homosexual. So, the, in the largest study of gay brothers, uh, let's see, uh, a genetic analysis of of a hundred four hundred and nine pairs of gay brothers includes sets of twins has provided the strongest evidence yet that gay people are born gay. Hmm. Hmm. The study clearly links sexual orientation in men to two regions of the human genome that have been implicated before. One on the X chromosome. Now, for those who uh, need a little refresher for biology, women have two X chromosomes. Men have one X chromosome. Every human being has an X chromosome. So one of them on the X chromosome, this is a, what, a birth defect, essentially. Hey. Um, well, I don't know what else to call it. Uh, you're, you're otherly sexual? I don't a know. A prize. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you win. It's a birth prize. <laughs> there you go. And uh, one on, the, on chromosome eight. The finding's important because the contribution to mounting evidence that uh, being gay is a biologically determined rather than a lifestyle choice. That's what I've believed since that's what people who are gay have told me, you know. When they've been growing up, they realized they were gay. It was something that there's they a downside were born with. to it too, though. Parents can say, "Oh, it's a shame my child was born this way." We're out of time for now, but we can talk more about it at another time. We'll see you tomorrow night at freetalklive.com. Have- On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day, from wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. 
from there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of Liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, November 24th, 2014. Silver is trading at $16.45 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,199 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $375. Antiwar.com reports the Afghan parliament on Sunday finally approved the troops deal, which will keep U.S. occupation forces on the ground through 2024 and beyond. The vote was 152 to 5 and loudly backed by President Ashraf Ghani. The plan was to keep the troops there purely in a training and advisory role, which was the official U.S. policy at the time. It also made several very specific limits on things U.S. troops could not do inside Afghanistan. Undiscussed in the Afghanistan parliament was the fact that the Obama administration openly plans to violate that pact on multiple fronts now and has the apparent blessing of Ghani elected earlier this year in a fraud-laden runoff vote. On Friday, it was revealed that President Obama has already signed a secret order that would ignore the training and advisory limit and ensure that U.S. ground troops remain in direct combat through at least 2015, the first year of the deal. Reports are now that Ghani has quietly agreed to lift another of the limitations, the ban on night raids against civilian homes in Afghanistan beginning next year. Night raids were hugely unpopular in rural Afghanistan, both because of the hostility towards occupation forces breaking down people's doors in the middle of the night and because of major civilian casualties in some of the incidents. This threatens to be even more unpopular than extending the U.S. combat roles inside of Afghanistan and that the facts did not emerge until after Parliament already rubber-stamped the troop deal suggests an effort to keep important facts out of the vote. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Reuters reports Tunisians voted on Sunday to pick their first directly elected president, with the two major parties expecting a runoff as the final step in the North African state's transition to full democracy following a 2011 revolution that ousted longtime ruler Ben Ali. Official results were yet to be announced, but shortly after the polls closed, the parties of the two frontrunners said initial tallies showed they had passed to a second round runoff next month. Political parties had observers at polling stations who act as witnesses to oversee preliminary counts, which allow them to tally results